got 50 grand in the bank. And I was, I, I and was, this is at 16. I was 18. It's before I'd gone into recruitment. Oh, yeah, 50 so, G's at 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So I'm now bro. getting, bro, you, you scammer, bro. I'm gonna smash your face in, bro. I know where you live, bro. I'm like, whoa, this is coming through to my my yeah. inbox, yeah, my inbox. I'm like, mate, what is going on here? Yo, what's happening, people? Welcome back to the Graph Kings podcast. We're back again here at Moomoo's, Kent's hottest nightclub, and today we're joined by a guest that covers a industry we've never had on before. His name's Harley. He's a personal shopper, amongst other things. And he... Yeah, why don't you do the rest? Why don't you tell yeah. us what else you do? Because uh, you're a jack of all trades, master Literally. of all. Done everything, done everything. So yeah, as you said, my name's Harley. Um, I'm predominantly known as the owner of Trend Sourcing, uh, but I also own an educational-driven company, which ties into what I do, which is the Trends Blueprint, which teaches people how to get into reselling. So I do reselling, I do personal shopping, but then I also teach people how to get into this place as well. Nice, and how, how did you get into it all? Because that sounds like a minefield. Yeah, do, do, do you know what? I always get asked this question. It's like a real weird one, because I jumped in and it, I jumped in, in and out of it. I was in it, I was out of it, I loved it, I hated it, but now this is me. Yeah. Um, and whatever else may fizzle out as years to come will fizzle out. How I got into it. Um, so, my, when, so when I grew up, my friends, I created a friendship group that were like normal people would go out, play football. But what I always used to see is like they would always have the latest trainers. And I'm not mm. giving the whole like poverty story here, but I was just like a normal, normal kid um, from East London, right? But it was like on the weekends, everybody had the latest Harachis at the time mm. or the latest Jordan Harachis. ones. I didn't know what Harachis were then, right? Yeah. yeah. And I remember it was, it was one day, uh, one of my pal's brothers said to me, oh, bro, we're going to go buy a pair of trainers from Carnaby Street. So it's still there now. And I remember so every time I walk past it, it makes my hair stand up. He's like, look, I want an extra pair. I want to sell them. He's like, you want to sell them? He's like, yeah. He's like, look, would you come with us? I was like, yeah, of course. Like, of course I will. Not thinking like I want to make money or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what I'll do is I'll give you the money for the shoes, but I'll give you like a tenner as well. And I'm like, I think I was like 14. I was like, bro, 100%. Like, <laughs> mate, I'll do this every single day. So we all went there. There was like, you're with all your pals, like 15, 16 of us. We're all there. Like, what's a cash? Because he's giving us the money for the shoes, right? So I've got this big wad of cash in my, in my, in my pocket. And um, he's like, cool, you're going to queue up. I want a UK8. Say that you want the screen green colorway. So we're all queuing up. It's like 5 a.m. <laughs> I'd queue up, big wad of cash, buy the shoes, give him the shoes, make a tenner. Right. I didn't think anything else of it. It was just like, yeah, buzzing for the weekend, bro. Wake up. Like, mum and dad didn't even know what I was doing. I'd like sneak out at like 5 a.m. I'd get home at like 10. I'd be like, where you been? I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to play football with the boys. This is like 14. This is at 14. Like, we'd all, we'd all go, because we'd all have like parks near us. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. like, everyone would meet up in the morning or we'd jump on a BMX or we'd yeah. like mess around. And I just did that continuously every weekend, sometimes mm. Saturday and Sunday. So like, make 20 pounds on a weekend, which look, ain't a lot of money, right? Back but, then, it was a, that bro, 20 quid last the whole weekend, bro. Do you know what I mean? All I used to think about is that like, I had the typical right like, entrepreneurial <clears throat> start, right? Selling sweets in school. Yeah. Even in primary school, I used to sell sweets. You sell match attacks. Remember the Shabbans? <laughs> yeah, 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 remember yeah. the Shabbans used to sell them. So I used to think, how can I fund these little businesses that I want to do? Or queue outside the store. Do you know what I mean? And we all didn't have a phone at the time, so I couldn't like take videos of all this money, but I just felt like felt like the guy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And then, so like I used to sell sweets in school, so I was building up a little bit of a flow. And then I started to understand the game now. I, I sort of understand this business model that he was making me go to the store buy the shoes for him. He was keeping a pair to rock, but he was also flipping a pair. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know where he was flipping or who he was doing it to until he then was like, look, bro, I can't make today. Can you meet this client for me? So I'm going to give you the money for the shoes, give you your 10 pound, but this geezer around the corner is going to meet you at the station and he's going to give you 550 quid. So I was like, but you've given me 90, bro. He's like, yeah, yeah, like go get the shoes. Like the, give you 100, the 90s for the shoes, the 10s for you, but he's going to give you 550. So yeah. I, remember, I, me <laughs> I remember doing this transaction, right? Yeah. And I was just like, Wait, like this guy is just like doing the maths. This guy just made like 450 quid in these shoes, right? But I still don't have the money to buy these shoes. Every drop I was going to was like, I wish I was this guy buying them. I wish I was this guy buying them. And then I remember a redrop dropped. So another pair that I bought previously, yeah. but I've sold this pair for him already, right? So I know how much they sell for. So I remember going to my dad, I was like, dad, look, this pair of Harachis, they're 90 quid, yeah? I swear to you now, I can sell them for 550. He's like, no. He's like, you can't. He's like, them shoes aren't selling for 550 quid. I was like, I was like, I but he didn't know what I was doing. Right? Yeah, I was like, of course. I'm going to buy them for 90 and they're going to sell for 550 quid. He's like, no. 
I didn't have money at the time. Yeah. The money that I was making from doing it, I was either like selling sweets or wasting it or playing out. Of course, yeah, yeah. You do, right? And you're still 14 at <clears throat> Yeah, in between that like 14, between, yeah. yeah, so like 14, 15, 16, I was drummed into doing this for him. Fine, okay. Yeah, I was like selling sweets in school heavy. Like when I went into year seven, I was the guy. Like for Lucas sweets. AIDS, Donuts, <laughs> that was me. Like, And I was a bit of a bully in that sense. Like you ain't selling sweets. Like this is, this is my area. Like you ain't doing it. And then, every, <laughs> and then everyone would start to work for me. What about the like, eights and nines? Yeah, I was, bro, I was throughout. But then it fizzled out. Then I started to customise tennis bats. So you know, like table tennis. Yeah. I'd get a wire tape, you know, like the colourful tape. And I'd create like loads of patterns on them. I did it to mine accidentally. So I got put into detention ones and I did it accidentally. And I was like, mate, this looks like an England flag. Yeah. And then all the kids in school were like, bro, how have you made your tennis bat like that? And I was like, look, I'll do it for you. Give me five pounds. They're like, sweet. So she'd sit there after school and do that. <laughs> and then I'd done like, Blackberry cases. Nice. Do you remember you could change a yeah. case yeah, yeah, Blackberry? Yeah, yeah. And then I found a supplier on eBay. So then I done Blackberry <laughs> cases. And then the shisha pens where you only used to get 400 puffs. Yeah. Do you remember them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I bought loads of them. I, said, oh, oh, I, was, oh. I sold everything. But on the weekend, I was still going back to selling trainers. Right. And then a drop come and I had the money. And I remember he ringing me up. He's like, bro, same again. I said, like, no, nah, bro. And he's like, bro, what do you mean though? But now he's like, I didn't realise how he looked at it as if I was like tied into him. Yeah, right. so he's like, bro, what? Like, got, it, got, it got a little bit. He's like, bro, what the fuck do you mean though? Got a bit techy. Yeah, it got a bit like, mm. it's like, bro, I'm going to buy him. He's like, bro, you ain't, you, you ain't got peas. I was like, no, no, like, I've saved up and I'm going to go buy him. And I remember going to this drop, bro, yeah, like going on my own, right? Because yeah. all the boys were still him. They were still his boys. Like, they mm. would all queue up. And it was just like the worst feeling ever. Like, they're at the front of the queue. I'm like mid queue. No one's like, there's no spuds going on here. I was like, oh, wow, like, okay. Whoa, like, like, anyway, like, yeah. luckily I've got in, got the shoes, devil, devil, gone and done what they've done. And I'm like, cool, like, I've got my shoes. Came out of the store, random guy's like, yo, bro, what size you got? I'm like, I've got nine and a half. He's like, 450 quid? I was like, cool, let's go. Just outside? What? Yeah, just outside, because that's what would happen, bro. So you'd queue up, but then there would be so, like- it's limited. Yeah, yeah. But then how do you know what time to get there? Bro, we skip at like 5 a.m. Yeah, but why, why are these store. people not queuing? Because they're like, got money, they don't care. They're like, cool, look, I'm going to stand outside. They're either rocking them or reselling them. But then that 450 pound, they've got a client already. I, that, I that they could. Because that's, that's what I do now. Oh, fine, fine. Like, because the, the sneaker game's completely changed. I don't do sneakers anymore. I'm so high end because- so, No, no, sorry, not to cut you off, but I was just going to say, how do you know which drop you want to go for that's going to give you that type of return? Drop date. Drop there was date. an app, there was a website called Drop Date. You used to go on there. It would say all the stores it was going into. Okay. And then you were sort of like, like there was loads of Facebook groups. It's all WhatsApp now, but right. there's Facebook groups. So people yeah, would be like, yeah. it was like a gang, like drop this weekend, boys. Average resale might be so-and-so or people would be like, want to buy it. And it's mad because I look at that space now and that's my game now. Yeah. I create these groups now. These want to buy, want to sell groups. Right? Yeah, insane. I'm in loads of them now and I'm admin of quite a few of them. And it's like, someone to be like, want to buy whoever's queuing this weekend. And these are men that have got like loads of money. Can't be asked to get up at 5 a.m. I want a UK nine. So realistically, as time went on, yeah. I had my client. Mm. I'd message him on Facebook. Yo, bro, I'm, I'm going to be in line this weekend. But then what I'd done, is so I bought my first pair, sold it. Thought I was like the man. I thought, you know what? I'm double caked here. <laughs> yeah, like I've got these fresh 50 pound notes. Gone home, drop again. And it was every Saturday. Yeah. But then what I started to do, I was like, cool, I don't really want to go to that store no more. Yeah. Because it's icy. So I used to go to Offspring opening Commercial Road, which is not too far mm -hmm. from where I used to live. Commercial Road. Commercial Road, yeah, Offspring. Time, mate. So I've done Offspring and then you had, I started to like map out where, and then you yeah. had Selfridges Offspring. Loads so we used of, to do there. So I used to there, just yeah. go to different, I used yeah, to go yeah. to different stores mm -hmm. where nobody was. But then what I had done is I replicated his business model. Right. So I was like, cool, I'm going to school all the time selling sweets. I've got loads of pounds. They don't know about this game. So I'm doing exactly what he done to me. So I'm like, bro, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, nothing, bro. Well, look, if I give you 20 pounds, do you want to come queue up for me? Then Yeezy come about. Okay. And this is when Yeezys were 150, but they sold for like 500, 600 pounds. Mm. So I remember the first Yeezy drop going outside store, but this is when like people were camping. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, bro, this is like Yeezy when pe yeah, people would camp outside yeah. the store. So I never used to really camp. I used to get there like maybe 4 a.m. And I was there until the shop opened. Right. But I would now have five, six other people with me. Okay. Giving him the money for the shoes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What this guy was Exactly what he was doing to me, yeah. bro. And they, and they, and they felt so how what, I you're felt. buying five, six pairs and reselling all of them? And then going to resell all of them. Wow. But then again, like you'd come out of the store and if I wanted a quick cash out, yo, bro, what size you got? Seven, give you 500 pound. But now I'm becoming like, I'm educated. I'm like, nah, bro, 600. Yeah, cool, bro, go. Yeah, yeah And course. then I'm in the Facebook groups. Crazy. The Yeezy Worldwide group still goes now. Um, and I'm actually quite good friends with my first ever client that bought a pair of moon rocks off me. I remember he pulled up, pulled up in a, a brand new Range Rover. He's like, yo, bro, can I see the shoes? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Pulled out loads of 50s. And every time Yeezy come, I just sold them to him. It seems like you love this industry, you know? Bro, I love it. I'm going to say, like, yeah, yeah, the way you're talking it. about it. Like, you love it. Yeah, passionate, it's, isn't it? It's, it's passion. Such, 
But that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to strip it back just a little bit and yeah, say, yeah. where does the five come from? Like that entrepreneurial spirit, wanting to, knowing this from a young age, even from selling sweets, like where does that five come from? You, yeah, bro, do you know what? It's weird, yeah, because like if you look at my CV and, I, and I, you know how old I am, right? 23, you'd go, no, nah, bro, you're not 23. My CV is long. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, and I do this to myself now, yeah, I stress out that I, I stress about being successful. So when I was young, I, ha I had a spark about I want to be a football player, right? Like everybody done it. And then I went into like, I want to be a chef. And then I went down, like, I want to be a poli police officer. And, like, okay. oh, wow. I'm okay. like, from, from where I'm from, like, bro, no, you can't be fed. So I'm like, yeah, that's not really a good idea, right? <laughs> and, like, that's not really a good idea. And then it went down, like, then I wanted to be an accountant. And then I drummed that into me because I, I used to tell my mum and dad about it. They're like, yeah, do you know what? Accountants, like, your uncle's an accountant, made loads of money. I'm like, cool, I want to be an accountant. Um, and then I got my uh, GCSEs and my yeah. maths wasn't there. Right. And I remember my head of year going like, bro, you ain't going to be an accountant. Yeah. Do you want to come onto sixth form? I was like, no. Then I went and applied for an intern in British Gas. Mm -hmm. Done that for a little while. I loved it. Couldn't get the job at British Gas because I didn't drive. Then I'd done, I'd done everything. But in line with that, I was like working, doing loads of part-time part stuff. Yeah. So I used to wash up on Sundays. Yeah. Um, at, yeah, like a bagel shop down Columbia Road. Hated that, but it was just to make money. I did British Gas. Um, I did construction. So I worked on site in between like 15 oh, and one, Yeah, yeah, with my dad. My dad's a brick, <laughs> my old man's a bricklayer. So I did construction. Loved that for a year because like 15, 16 year old on site. Yeah, but then I was missing out on the drop. So I'd stop mm. doing that. And then it was like 6 a.m. cold morning. So I'm like, cool. Mm. Don't want to go and be a bricklayer like my dad. Don't want to work on site. Because my brother, my older brother's a scaffolder. Yeah. My little brother's a scaffolder. My sister works in beauty. So it was like very like, by the time I got to like 18, I'm like, mate, we're like a proper like white family. You know? like, dad's, in, <laughs> like, dad's, in, dad's in construction. <laughs> Sisters in beauty, like <laughs> so I've got to somehow switch up the game here. Um, and then I remember it was, I went to um, this like thing in King's Cross and it was helping people get a job. Mm. And I was talking to this guy and I was like, I want to be an accountant. And he was like, you're never going to be one. He's like, you don't come across right. You've got bits studying in your ear. Like you just don't really talk like an accountant would talk. You don't act like one. Mm. So cool. He said, um, like the Wolf of Wall Street kind of concept, but Wolf of Wall Street, I don't think was out then. He was like, cool, sell me. I don't know what he said. He said, sell me this. So I gave him a little bit of a spill. He said, uh, recruitment. I said, I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. He said, he said, 100%. But that's what I said to you earlier before the camera's rolling. I can yeah. see why you've that's done what, it. Yeah, that's what he said to me. He said, recruitment. I can see why you've done it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, nah, man. I was like, nah, that's not really my thing. But again, I'm still selling trainers at this point. But oh, you again, are. it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. that I never see that. It's like, I'm going to sell trainers for a living. I'm going to open this mm. sneaker store. It never ever went through me. Yeah. That was my hobby. People played football on the weekend. I never played football. Yeah. Well, I used to play football, but not like, oh yeah, I'm a football player. I used to play in goal. Yeah. Because okay. I was like quite tall, quite like chubby at that point. So I never really enjoyed football. So it'd be like, where are you going this weekend, bro? I'm going to go buy shoes. And I had like three or four boys that didn't play football that would come with me. And we did it every single weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, someone that said to me, you know, hobby, right? yeah, yeah. Like, I think I enjoyed reselling more then than I do now. Because it was like 15, 16, six, seven year boys, McDonald's breakfast in the morning, <laughs> big water cash by the end of the day. Big buzz off the bat. Yeah, That's a yeah. routine, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah chill yeah, on the nice, weekend. Yeah, like, I had no stresses, right? Like, I had nothing to stress about. Um, it's so unique though at 16 to be earning that money, mate. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a decade older, on, older than you and yeah, at yeah. 16, I definitely weren't doing that, mate. Yeah, mate, it got to a I definitely weren't doing that. Do you know what? It's funny because I remember when I was, I was about 18, I remember I'd, I went and jumped in on a job with my dad again. He was like, oh, look, come on, come on this job. And I remember him saying like, he said something like, not something about money. And then I remember sitting in, it was on my lunch break, I tied everything up and I was like, mate, I've got 50 grand in the bank. And I was- I, I And was, this is at 16? I, I was 18. It's before I'd gone into recruitment. Oh, you had 50 so, Gs at 18? Yeah, G's yeah, yeah. So I, but I blew that fairly quickly because then it was like, oh, you're going out now. So like, like faces have come about. Now I've got my faces. Oh, okay, come, yeah, yeah, yeah. Faces? Yeah. Like, that's oh, why yeah. I learned to pull, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. That's like, why I learned like, to pull, come, mate. And you've got to think like, faces <laughs> is like going out of the area. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, everybody yeah. comes into Gang Shoreditch. Silver, yeah, 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 mate. Jumping on the central line, like 30 years going out. I live around the corner there. What, in, yeah, is that where you live near yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, literally around so, the corner. Like going to faces, that blew fairly quickly, still doing the drops, but then the sneaker game just went, done. Did it? You couldn't queue up no more. Okay. Because every drop I went to, someone would get stabbed. Someone would get beat up because then what it was, oh, wow. then people that would also wait for shoes would be bombarded by people that are like, I ain't queuing up. When that door opens, I'm going to bombard it. And yeah, every yeah, drop, yeah, bro, yeah, and right. it was a Yeezy drop that I decided not to go to. Someone got stabbed, police called it off. Every single bit of stock from that drop went onto a raffle. And wow. that's what happened then. It just fizzled out. Yeah, Makes yeah. Sense, everything's just got so, so everything now. Stopped. Like, yeah, you yeah. can't even wear nice stuff as you well. You can't, you can't, man. And everything stopped. I was like, well, that's What year was this? Yes, guys. So as you know, we have recently partnered up with IPAM. They are specialized chartered surveyors based in the very heart of London. 
and in Kent. So guys, you're probably thinking, who are IPAM? IPAM are specialists when it comes to letting, leasing, and strategic investments. Guys, IPAM pride themselves on not only working on behalf of the occupier, but also on behalf of the owner. What chartered surveyor do you know that offers a 24 seven support system? IPAM are those chartered surveyors. If you're looking to make a strategic investment in property or just simply looking to find out some information about the property world, hit IPAM up on their website, drop them a DM on Instagram, and all of their socials will be below this video. So a massive love to IPAM for sponsoring the Graph Kings. Now let's get back to the pod. That was the Yeezy, I wanna say Yeezy Brits, which come out, I want to say, but it would have been 2008. Yeah, it would have been around 2008. It was 2017 and 18, because that's when it all just stopped. Do you know what? It's funny you say that, because I feel like the shit, there's a massive shift in culture since then. Like, everything's changed since then. Mm. Yeah. Like, everything. Like, not, not just what you're talking about, the game, like music, uh, like the way people were, like, um, hold Interact. themselves, yeah. the clubbing culture, yeah. dating culture, Instagram, the way girls look. Everything's changed. Yeah, from, yeah, everything from 2017, 18, Everything's gone completely like to shit. Yeah, to, yeah, to shit. I yeah. mean, twenty nineteen was the last proper good solid year where he's like, there was nothing going on in the world. There's no cares, no yeah, worries. Yeah, yeah. Do what we want when we want. Twenty nineteen. Nineteen yeah. was a good year. Nineteen yeah, was a good year. Nineteen I mean, yeah. was a good year. Don't get yeah. wrong, we had fun during twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. But yeah, the dynamic shifted. Yeah, the whole world's changed. But that's crazy. You couldn't even do a, do a drop anymore. So how did you? That? When that happened, how did you? What did you do to stop, adapt? Like, mate, I was still like, so instead of queuing up, I'd wake up at five a.m. Laptop, phone, iPad, try and draw. Try and go into these raffles. No entry, no entry, no entry. One come in, great, cool, nice it were not. And then it was like, I then went, would I have been in sixth form at 18? I think I would have been, yeah. So so I went into, I was doing sixth form business. So I've got quite good, like, people like shots. Oh, bro, you got GCSEs, I've got GCSEs, I've got A-levels. Because yeah, yeah. I always thought in the back of my head, but I thought at the time, which isn't the case now, right? You need to have grades to fall back on because yeah. this, if I want to go and That's do this or that, or that, you need so, it, right? Yeah. Now, I personally think, and I say this to people that come on board and join my blueprint, in all honesty, all you need is a personality. Mm. If you have a personality, yeah, I can walk into, I'm, I'm not arrogant now, but so I, had a, I had a recruiter ring me up the other day because my number was still on LinkedIn. And she was like, I just entertained her for the sake of it. She was like, oh, okay, cool. Look, like we've got this really good job. How much do you want to get paid? I said, hundred grand. She, she, she laughed. I said, she what? I said, hundred grand. She said, why? I said, I know I'll come into your company now and make you more than hundred K. I went, I know I'm good at what I do. And it was like, when I first joined the recruitment, I wasn't like that, but a personality will override anything because I walked into this. So I'd done, done my A-levels. I dropped out for, I dropped out for three weeks yeah. when I worked for a recruitment firm, hated it. I was a resourcer at the time. Mm. Anybody didn't know that? Yeah, it was like, smash the phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, I was, <clears throat> mate, and all fire. everyone done was get on drugs. Oh, yeah. And I only saw drugs in films. Cool. And I'll never ever forget this year. I only saw drugs in like Green Street, <laughs> football yeah. films that I used to watch that I weren't allowed to watch, but I watched it anyway, right? Yeah. And that's all they spoke about. Drugs, 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 that's girls, girls, girls. Oh, I was still young at this point, so I weren't in that space. No, you weren't exposed yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, like, go out on a Friday, everyone's just, like, off their chops. I don't know what's going on here. Like, I would sit, sit in the bar, everyone's gone. Everyone's, like, like, gone to the toilet, and he was just, like, walking, and I remember I tweeted, and I keep trying to find this tweet on another Twitter. Why is everybody so unhappy in the city? Because I used to walk to work, because yeah. where, where I live, like, Liverpool Street was 15-minute walk. I was the only person in the company that walked, and everybody looked unhappy. Do you reckon that's down to all the substances and everything everyone's taking? No, or, no but who, or, enjoy, like, who enjoys a lot of nine to five? Personally, but they say the most unhappiest people within the UK is in is in London. Yeah, they do. They do say that. Yeah, like, but it's, London's got some of the most unhappiest people. Yeah, I think, and, and, and I think that's so true. Like, who enjoy like who enjoys a nine to five? Mm. Yeah, like listen, I'm not saying a nine to, a nine to five has helped me massively. The, the, the company that I worked for. The other recruitment firm that went into, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would be as equipped as I am now. Yeah. And I give that to them, right? If they watch this, they're going to be like, hey, yeah, we made him. But it's not that. It's the way I spoke and conducted my films was different. Yeah. So I've done that, come out of it, went back into sixth form, and then I've become a bit of a lost soul. Right, okay. Yeah, I was like, I remember it's me and my, me and my boy Elijah, he's like my, like like that. I don't see him as often now, but he's, we're like that. We used to sit in coffee shops in Costa, and we was like, bro, what are we going to do, man? Like every teacher loved us because we were these two guys that mm -hmm. weren't, we was on our, like we were just on it, mate. Like yeah. went back in school. I was like, you know what, bro? Like we're going to do this, man. And then I, I I got accepted at EY, the big four. I turned that down. I was like, no, it's too corporate for me, man. And then I went for an interview at a recruitment firm again. I thought, you know what, bro? Like I yeah. did enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it. But everyone's saying, bro, you're salesman, salesman. Yeah, yeah, Wolf yeah. of Wall Street had come out this time, yeah? Cool. I'm like, bro, I need to work in the city, man. Like, I, I don't want to do trading because I'm like not good with numbers, but like, let me let me try one more time. Went down to Zara, got this mad check shirt, um, and I had a nice. I had, yeah, nice no, it, it weren't. It was a proper Larry 
checkered like might look like an absolute donut. I, I had navy suede right. loafers. Yeah, apparently you can't well. wear navy suede loafers in the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I had these like mad funky socks on, <laughs> and um, I had a nice watch at the time because like from selling sweets and trainers, my my dad always says to me like go and buy watches, it'll, it'll save money. Yeah, right? yeah, so I thought you know what, I haven't wore this watch. Yeah, so I thought cool, I'm gonna go into this interview. I got an interview at uh, Fox and Reese. Yeah, and I remember sitting down in front of the guy. Thought I was meeting a rector rec. My luck, rector rec turned in sick. Directors in the office. Today, oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Director, Touch. the owner. <laughs> haven't done no research. Haven't come in with a notepad. Haven't really done a proper interview before. Yeah, yeah. Because the recruitment firm that I've done before was like a friend of a friend. I've got in quite back I'm door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting there like all suited. Like he bowled in. He's half like looked at me and thinking, "Mate, what are you?" Doing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he went, "You know, who I am." I said. Uh, no nah, mate I, I don't man I thought, I thought I was meeting the, the guy that I was meant to meet I said okay cool he's like diving into me a little bit tell me about the company didn't have a clue cool let's make some notes then mate yeah this is we got I went uh, I ain't got a notepad okay cool he went, let me tell you a little bit about me he told me about his story I own the firm set it up when I was 21 and then he just stared at me and he's just like this, this game ain't for you he said I've got boys said out there too, yeah he said I've got boys out there that want it way more than you you haven't got a notepad you don't know who I am. You've come in a nice suit and look, you've got quite a nice kettle on so you must be doing well for yourself. And mate, I could just feel like my face is going red. Yeah. He was like, look, it's, the game's not for you. He went, look, they have a little look at other things out there. Maybe our paths will cross a little bit later down the line. Long story short, I ended up meeting him probably about a year ago. He called me in for an interview. Oh, wow. and oh, I, wow. I only wanted to go there just to, to blow it. smoke yeah, up yeah, my yeah. ass a little bit and say, you know what, because I was quite, I've become well known on, on LinkedIn through recruitment when I went into another recruitment yeah. firm. I bowled out of there and I went straight back to Zara. I've got the refund on this suit. I kept the tags in it and all sorts of yeah. And it was like <laughs> fake, but I knew I wasn't going to get it. Yeah. And I remember going to my mum like, I'm done for, man. Like, I thought I was going to do recruitment. Like, the accountancy thing's done. I do want to do British Gas, but I can't. The sneaker reselling thing's like hard. Um, like, what do I do? And then I started to apply for a CSCS card. I thought I'd go back on, on to a job with my dad. On the tours, yeah. And then I started to add a bit of a light bulb when I was thinking, like, wait, all those clients I had from sneaker selling, who are they buying from now? How can I convert them back? Because they've got loads of money and I was making loads of money doing it. And then I had a bit of a light bulb moment at the time. I was like, they wear designer clothes. And I always thought that though, because I thought I'm sending you one pair of trainers, but you're pulling up in an Amiri hoodie, Dior t-shirt and Amiri jeans. Imagine mm. I could get into that space. Mm. So I just started to network, 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 network. And then what I used to do is I went back to sixth form after all this recruitment kerfuffle, they get, I had one more year to, to do it. So what I thought, I thought, you know what, if I can try and get designer clothes cheap, and dive back into these clients because they trust me anyway. I might be able to make some money here. So I was going into designer outlets. So every time Flannels had a sale or I'd go down to Bista, I'll take pictures of designer items and I'll just fire them into people. Yo, bro, I've got this available. I'd add 10, 20 pounds on top of it. Yeah, bro, go on, I'll take it. They'd wire me the money, then I'd buy it. So now all them like, fake dropship things you see on YouTube, yeah? I was like, no, this is dropshipping. Yeah, not what these people are saying on, 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 on YouTube. This is dropshipping. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take a payment Pretend this stock's mine. I was going into the changing rooms. I was putting them on like I do to this day. And I was going, yo, bro, I've just got this in stock. Because they knew me as the kid that sold trainers. No, now I'm the kid that sells trainers and clothes. Because I was still, I got back into the trainer selling. I started wow, to network okay. with the kids. Like, have you ever heard of bots? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. You put yeah. a bot on your computer and it's trying to get you into the, so the kids. Now what I would do, you know, you said, why do people stand outside shops and buy shoes? Mm. But now what I would do is I would go down bots. So how it worked with raffles, you could collect the item from the store if you won the raffle. Okay. So I was like, cool, the drops on the raffles there, the drop's going to be a week after that raffle. So I'll go down to Oxford Street and you'll see all it was weren't men anymore. It was young kids with Ikea bags full of shoes. That's insane. Because they have now cracked the game. Yeah. And they still do it to this day now. Like you've got other platforms now that are bot generated, yeah? And they're probably millionaires, yeah? And I was like, yo, bro, what you bought? Yeah, yeah, let me take your number. Yeah, let me, let me cash you out. So I'd go down there with all the cash and that what people were doing to me, I was doing to them. And these were like 15, 16 year olds. Elaborate for it, elaborate for us. What do you mean? So like what people do with me when I come out the shop, yo, what size you got? I'll buy it I'll off you. you. I was doing it with them. So I was just yeah. making little quick flips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I was like, cool. But surely the profit on that weren't as big, no? No, nowhere near. Yeah. Nowhere near because they were botting it. And then you got to think young kids, they wanted quite a hard margin. So yeah. I was making maybe 30, 40 pound a pair. But right, I was still okay. now building up a little bit of a flow. Yeah, yeah of course. Cool. And then I was going into the designer wear. So I was going into like, as I say, flannels, I was just yeah. doing it off the sale. Flannels would have like, and they still do now, like 70% sale. Yeah. So like, palm eight, it was, it was like D squared and Valentino rock runners then. Yeah. yeah. Like, rock runners went down to like three bills or they went down to like 250 pound. Yeah. So I'd be like 295, put it on my personal story, send it to people. Then I create an Instagram on it. 
Okay. And it weren't personal shopping. It was cool. I called it unlimited fashion. Unlimited fashion is now trend sourcing. This was the account that I'd done. Fine, okay, cool. So I was doing a little bit of flips there, trying to integrate trainers. Didn't have a clue about content because I never took pictures of the items before. Mm -hmm. It was like <clears throat> quick snap, yeah. outside on the thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was doing. Like I was taking pictures of shoes on my bed, but they were selling, mm. but it weren't a business, right? Then I just randomly, I come back from LA. I went to, I traveled around America. Right. And um, I come back. It was a, like a holiday that I went on. I come back and this random phone call called me. It was like, I thought it was a joke because she was quite, she sounded like me, comment. She's like, look, Harley, I've come across your CV. Why don't you come in for an interview? At this point, you're not in recruitment, right? Not in recruitment. This, this is At this point, I've, okay. I've, I'm, I'm coming out of sixth form, not knowing right. what I want to do, but I'm doing the clothes thing a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like dabbling in, I'm, I'm, I'm applying for loads of different things. Yeah. And then she was like, come, come for an interview. Okay. Like, I really like your vibe. Mm. And, she, and then she went to me, um, like, where do you live? And I said, oh, I live in Bethlehem Green. And then she said, our office is in Liverpool Street. And this is what I thought was a joke. She said, okay. She went, um, like, what day can you come in? I said, I can come in now. She's like, but don't you live? She's like, she says, I'm like, don't you live quite far? And I thought like, well, Bethnal Green, Liverpool Street, like this is obviously a joke. Yeah. So I was like, cool. I said, look, I've got to go anyway. Look, send me, send me an email and I'll, I'll come back to you. Anyway, long story short, sent me an email, went to the interview um, at a recruitment firm for railway work. Yeah. And ended up getting a job. And then that was it. That paused, stopped doing that now. And you stopped it at that Yeah, point. because I remember walking into this firm and within the first week, I loved it, man. Yeah. Like there was loads of young people Even there. You hate it. Yeah, the rector, rec girl, Chloe was like me. Yeah. So she was like the mum of the company. And I was like 18, suit that now in, still had like loads of rascal suits and everyone at work was saying Back to Zara. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like now I know about Broadgate Circle. So yeah. now that stopped. I was like recruitment, recruitment, Good recruitment. Broadgate yeah, Circle. yeah, recruitment, recruitment, recruitment. Yeah. But even then I still like, I can't like, I'm, why am I waking up at 8 a.m. or not even, why am I waking up at 6 a.m. and finishing at 5 p.m.? But mm -hmm. if you know recruitment, you don't finish at 5. They give me a work yeah. phone and like, I remember him saying to me, like, bro, if anyone calls you on the weekend, answer it, yeah? Yeah. And I was like, do I get paid? And I remember him going, like, bro, mate, you, he's like, you are delusional. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, no, nah, of course it's you don't. It's part of the job. Yeah, yeah, but I'm thinking like, I was taking, like, mate, I was railway, yeah? We're very dominant on Christmas. Mate, I was working on Christmas Day. Like, I was up at 4 a.m. Yeah. on Christmas Day, checking Fucking people out. in. Yeah. I think the thing is though, mate, like, I think in order for you to truly know the value in what you do now, mm. you yeah. had to do that. And you know what? You it's, had to do yeah, that. Well said. I, I sit there on the blueprint, right? Because the blueprint is very driven around escaping your nine to five and side hustles. And I say it all the time. Look, a nine to five is a scam and I'll live by it. Yeah. And I got caught up in the matrix and it is a scam because a nine to five teaches you that you have to wake up at a certain time and finish mm. at a certain time to be successful. And that's the way I felt. Like the way I felt is I had to work in a city. I had this American dream, right? I had to work in a city to be successful. So the way I looked on social media while yeah. working in recruitment was this big city boy doing really well, making thousands. Yeah, 18 come out. Like the money that I portrayed this city lifestyle was from this trainers. Like, I went and got Mercedes, financed an A class company, put me on LinkedIn. Like, oh, we've just helped him achieve this. I weren't even making commission then. Mm. I think I started on 19K and I think I left the company on like 35. So, was that like a 360 desk then? Or was so it? it was, yeah, I was a resourcer. So I, I went in as a resourcer. Yeah. Within a month, he's like, you can you can definitely sell. Okay, so yeah. I got a client okay, on like nice. that. So yeah, yeah, he see the potential because I was you. like, look, I was like, a client called. I wanted to get on the front of the client. So, I, and do you know what, man? I did love it. I loved it for about a year and yeah. I lived and breathed the company. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. Recruitment. People used to say, you used to go broad get on a Friday. What do you do? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a recruitment consultant. <laughs> top, I used to say, top, the, the word top yeah, biller yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah, top yeah, biller. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to tell people I was a resourcer. People used to be like, oh, mate, you're a joke, mate. Yeah, just you're like, a, you're a consultant. You're a job, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, cool. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I was like, I'm a consultant. Like, yeah, top biller. Yeah, my, my financials last year were nuts, mate. Nuts, nuts. <laughs> and then it was just like, I was like, oh, man, I. I I don't really like, I, I enjoy it, but what I'm bringing in isn't showing in my wage. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was nicking, I was just under <clears> two grand a month, which at then was was good because it was comfy. But then I was like, what? I need to find something I enjoy. And I, I kept avoiding the trainers thing. So I was thinking okay. like, that's, like that's, not, that's not feasible. Like, I'm not going to make money from selling trainers. The game's done now. Like, But clients were now reaching out to me again. Yo, bro, have you got this? Yo, bro, have you got that? So the whole buying the designer stuff again, I started to do it again. So rather than going out on the weekend, I would go into it. I would like try and drop ship. Right, yeah, it weren't yeah. drop shipping then, but what, what I was doing there makes sense now, right? So I would, I would do that. Um, and then I started to build up the Instagram again. Instagram was still terrible. And then um, I don't know how this come about, right? But I sold something on Facebook. Bear in mind, my Instagram was terrible. And then it was like a week later, boom, blue seat follow. I was like, mate, I'm in. Yeah. I was like, I'm in now, yeah. It didn't materialise, but I thought, you know what? My Instagram must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now going to show some volume, right? Like, I've got a blue tick follower following me. 
So I, I kept doing that, but now I started to get quite motivational. Like when I was going out now, when people saying, what do you do? Yeah, I'm a recruitment consultant, but I've also got this. Now I started to plug it in because I thought, you know what? They're, 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 there's an opportunity I've got. 100%. Here. Yeah. Because the dropship thing started to get busy. Like it started to get easy. Mm. I'll go into store. And this was with Clobber, yeah? This is all designer clothes. So the cool. sneaker thing was just like, it was here and there. Now yeah. I don't touch it at all. The odd sneaker oh, wow, I okay. touch, but that game's like, I don't, like even what we drum into our blueprint, my blueprint is all around high end designer wear. Okay. So yeah. I'm talking your big brands like your Dior, your, your Goyard, your, you name it. All your big brands is what yeah. I specialize in now. I'm oh. now, so I started like D squared, Valentino. That's what I was dropshipping. Yeah, cool. uh, Givenchy, that, that, that was my niche. Yeah. Now people know me for like Dior, LV, Goyard, Hermes. Like cool. we're selling like Birkin bags. So now. at what point while you was doing recruitment, did you say this is becoming so scalable that I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing and focus on this full time? Yeah. Or, so, or did you stop recruitment and then it became scalable because you focused all your time onto that? Yeah, good question. Lockdown was the main reason that I stopped. So, but prior to that, what, what, what a day in the life would look like for me is I'd wake up at 5 a.m. Mm. I'd be in the city around 7 a.m. But I wouldn't start till 8. Yeah. The good thing about my, well, not the good thing, but the bad thing about the company I worked for, there was no early finish on a Friday. Right. It was 8 till 5.30. Yeah. Everybody normally started at 9, finished at 5 on Friday. Yeah. With beers, finished at 4, right? So I'd get in the city for around 7, go into a coffee shop, I'm now thinking, cool, the pictures that I took on the weekend, now let's start pumping that to my, to my network. Let me start putting it on, on Instagram a little bit. Yep. Let's see what kind of sales I can make. I will then follow up on at lunch because you can't, couldn't really go on your phone. Like, mate, honestly, yeah, in, my, in my company, yeah, they must have thought, they must down, thought I had IBS yeah. because I was always in the toilet. <laughs> oh, mate, same. Yeah, I was always I in the toilet, mate. And I was well. like, they hated it. got it's, to a point yeah. where the manager was like, mate, you, like, what's going on with you? Because no one knew at work. I've got this tolerance, mate. No, he was like, you're always on your phone. But nobody knew. And I mean, mate, I'll come up with excuses like family members ill, cats died, this like sicknesses. How I was many like, cats you got? Yeah, yeah. Mate, His nan's I died wanted, five times this yeah, year. I, just wanted to, I wanted to get home. I wanted to get home and make money. I love making money. <clears throat> yeah. And that's the thing about like working a nine to five. You don't see that. But I make money every single day. Yeah. Every single day, I'm, I, there's, there's an exchange of money. I'm with you. And that motivates me. But do you know what I find the craziest thing from out of everything that you said, personally, is the fact that you was coming out of sixth form and you was worrying that you basically like, what am I going to do in my life? Yeah. And you're 18 at this point. Yeah. So do you not think that that's maybe a part of the way society and social media and everything has kind of come to is why you felt that pressure? Because I don't feel 100%. like that. 18. I feel like that now though. Like you people, like yeah, people turn around to me and go, bro, you're successful. Like every single day I stress, but it's good stress, right? Yeah. yeah. But, it's because like there's no there's no um, there's no cap on success. Yeah, because no. you know what it is. There's, I... no, there's no limit. You no. get to, you know, jump in, you get to the next point. Like, oh, cool, now I want to do this. Yeah, cool, mm. now I want to do this. But then we've spoke about this on previous pods. I said you need to enjoy the process. It looks like you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. But then if if, if there's some people that 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 could be in your position that is doing as well as you are, but they they hate it because they're just chasing their next goal. Yeah. So like I'm I'm guessing you're happy where you are currently. You're content or yeah yeah I wouldn't yeah I would say happy but I always want more. Yeah. Yeah, I so like, it's that. like if, I, if, it, I, if yeah. I break a deal, like say for example, I sell a pair of Dior's and I make a hundred pound, well, I want to make 150 pound next time. Or I'll set myself financial goals and physical goals. Yeah. I was going to say, like, is it all about a pound note for you, your goals? Or is it, or have you got goals as in where you want the business to be, what you want to venture out into? Obviously now you've got the blueprint. Like, do you see other avenues in where your businesses and your ventures can go? Or is it all yeah. just about, I want to make that pound note? Do you know what? It's mad, right? Because if you shop with me to start, and you're a big client, I'm gonna lose money on you. Yeah? Most personal shoppers will look at you as an advantage and make money on you because they're gonna think Ernest here, big, mm -hmm. big client. Yeah. See, the way I think is if I if I get you here on deal one, you're never leaving me again. So how do I get you in my palm? Because I'm I'm not special, right? Like people say, What's your unique selling point? I don't believe that exists. I don't believe anybody has a unique selling point. What well, you turn around and say your delivery is fast, so I can make my delivery fast. Yeah, personal shopping is saturated. We're all the same people, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got different stock, you don't, bro because you've got it from a brand in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So my, not unique selling point, but my way of thinking, which to some people be like, why are you losing money? And I say this to our blueprint members, right? That come on board on the educational front is don't worry about making money. So the, my blueprint's 12 weeks, right? And people say, okay, bro, how much money am I going to make? Or how much profit are going to make? I say, no, no, no. In that 12 weeks, don't worry about making money. Worry about building a business and building yeah. a client base. Yeah, cool. So how I look at it, and I did this in, so I did my first ever pop-up in three months ago in Dubai. My first ever time going to Dubai on my own. Because mm -hmm. I went to Dubai last year with family and I went in February with the missus. Went to Dubai on my own. Networked with a guy in February when I went out with the missus. And he was just basically like, bro, you are something else. And what you do could blow here. Come and do a pop-up. 
He's like, I'm going to put you in a supercar showroom. It's called the luxury supercar showroom, biggest showroom in Dubai. Mm-hmm. He's like, bring loads of stock and, and I'm going to just push clients to you. Yes, people, if you're enjoying this pod as much as we are, we'd really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button. Let's get back to the pod. And there were certain clients that would come in and I would judge people, right? Like, or he would give me a nudge. He'd go, bro, she's big time. Like her husband, multi-millionaire, or he'd go, see him? Big, big property portfolio. So in my head straight away, they go, how much is that? I'm now losing money. Because I want him to turn around and go, oh shit, yeah, like this guy's serious. Because that's just going to lead to inquiry. So you say like, am I driven by money? 100%. I think everybody is, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, it's like, would I rather but make but- 50K, 50K this month mm-hmm. and scare away a clientele because he was too expensive? Or would I rather make X amount knowing that him, 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 and him are now advocates of my business? Mm. And they're going to turn around and go, you see that Harley guy? Service, price, everything, A star. Because I look at other personal shoppers' price, and I go, how do you get away with that? Because they're pound note driven. Okay. Mm. But then that, that's good for me, right? Like, I love expensive personal shoppers because you're too pricey. So you're going to scare away that big dog. That big dog's going to come in front of me. I'm then going to break even or lose money on his first order. He isn't going to go anywhere else. Well, then you're the I think this comes back to what you said earlier, though. Um, I've always believed it myself as well. What you said, that's why I was like, I was wanted to get back to that point was that with the right personality, you can have anything. 100%. Yeah. And the person, people yeah. buy people. They don't yeah. buy. People buy how you do something, not what you do. 100%. I like, I, that, people say, like, I am the brand. You are, yeah. And it's, it's even like with the blueprint, right? Because the blueprint is very driven to me. Um, and even uh, Yaz said it Yaz was like bro why don't you turn the blueprint like forget about the blueprint right like why don't you change the blueprint to your name because like people ain't buying the blueprint aren't they they're buying you correct mm-hmm. yeah and I was like do you know what That's, it is a really good idea like build the blueprint around you because the blueprint is me yeah and it's even like when I, I, I do the one to one consultations or the kickoffs and people jump on it like no way bro it's you like they don't think I'm going to be on it right but when I'm on it, every call I take, I close because they're buying into me. Correct, yeah. Yeah, because I am the blueprint. 100%. Yeah, that, the trends blueprint is me. It's my eight years in the game. It's how I scaled my business to seven figures last year. And it's how I'm going to go help and help aspiring resellers do the exact same. They want to work with me. Yeah. Don't care about my fancy logo. Don't care about the nice office I've got. They want to, like, bro, I want to work with you. Yeah, cool. That's and that great. price they're paying is to work with me and every single member gets me. And it's like what you said there. It's like, pers- like you could be the cleverest person in the room. But if you have a personality, it's not a yeah, yeah, it. yeah, fucked, yeah. But if you have a personality, and that's why I think I've scaled so quickly. All of my clients that I've got now have been done through word of mouth or like referrals. It's a so like, scheme, man. Yeah, like see, my client 100%. base now is quite weird. Like er, all of my clients know each other. Yeah, because like, the, the, the day, like the world you're in now, right? It's like I don't deal with random clients. A random client might message me, "Oh, bro, yeah, have you got this? Yeah, I come meet you, pay cash. <laughs> no chance. Go somewhere else. I don't roll like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll." solely based on referrals yeah i'm too streetwise in the sense that i'm not going to come and meet you with this design of stock on the hopes that you're going to pay me mm. so now the way that my business has been sculpted is like i serve you you're then going to be straight in your group chat or on instagram shouting me out someone's going to come to you and go what <laughs> tell me about this like who's yeah. this trend bro prices are perfect yeah. services unreal what am I if i refer kidding? you he'll come deliver it to you yeah so all of my clients allow like a domino that they all know each other and I always ask clients. It's the strongest. It's the strongest. Yeah, I always say that like, word of mouth strong? is the strongest form of business. Yeah, mate. definitely. And you are like you are your brand. If you can't put yourself out there, and, and that's why people like I get people all the time go, bro, you're nuts, man. I'm like, why? You show your face, because like like two three years ago, it was it pers- the, the personal shopping world was blur your face out, look drippy, don't show your face. Like all the Henry Chadwicks in the Undivided would blur their face out, so everyone copied. So that's what I used to do. I used to blur my face out. Yeah. And the only reason I showed my face, which is quite a big part of my story is that when I left my nine to five in 2021, it was probably the worst experience of my life. Tell, well, I couldn't tell us about that. Yeah. So fast forward, lockdowns come. I thought, damn, like my business is done. Like working from home was horrific. Mm. Yeah. Like I don't live in a big house, right? So, so just to stop you there, Holly, just quickly, sorry, just in jet you go on that story. You've scaled the business in two years. So I've been so I've been doing it since the age of fifteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Course, yeah. yeah. But I've been doing it full time two years. Cool. Okay, so I'm cool. still at the very like. That's why when people like you said to me, I've been on podcasts. I have been asked, but I've said no. Or someone turned around and go, "Bro, you're so successful." I don't think I am. I don't think I've been given enough time. That's a good I love mentality. that. I love that. Yeah, right mentality to have. I'm making normal mistakes now, but I'm beating myself up because I'm thinking, why are you making them mistakes? But then I'm only two years in. Mm. Yeah. I've only been alone. I don't have business partners, right? Mm. Like all my, I've never ever had a business partner. And I said it to Yaz on the phone today. I said like, what I'm struggling with now, bro, is like, I'm hitting brick walls and I want to talk to somebody. Yeah. But you talk to your mum and dad, they tell you what you want to hear. No. You talk to your friends, they don't no. really understand. You talk to someone who's done it. Tough loving you. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I'm like, but then I had a business partner when I started Trend and I outworked him. 
And it's just like, I need to find someone that mirrors me yeah. and brings more to the table than I do. And this will scale fairly quickly. So I end up just doing it on my own. You know what? You're struggling to find that. It will come, but you're do you know, do you know what? I've got someone, man. Yeah. That nice. guy that I met in Dubai. Nice. Yeah. The guy that, that, that oh. guy that I met in Dubai and now, and we're sort of like business partners now, but we're not. Mm-hmm. Like he does his thing. I do my thing. He pushes clients to me. I push clients to him. But then we somehow come in the middle and I'll give him advice about his business. He'll give advice about mine. But you know what I like is you don't know about my game yeah. and I don't know about his. Yeah, nice. No, okay. Do you, you, you see what yeah, I mean? It's 100%. just like, and I've been like, I've had people offer to buy my business. I've had big clients offer to invest because they see my work rate. Again, yeah. back to but personality. Then you, then you work for them. Yeah, yeah. Back to personality. They're saying like, bro, see you, you're, you're mad. Like your work rate, like your turnaround time. Let me invest. Let me, but I, I built a business to like a, a point where I don't need investment. Yeah, yeah. I don't need any investment from anybody. And that's what I said. I need. It's powerful, man. I don't know what I need. In all honesty, you, like, I'm you, at a phase now. So go, let's go, go back on, to. Go, I want him to go back to. Go back to 2021. Yeah. So, so to talk to us about that pinnacle moment where you went. I can. I can leave this job. Yeah, this, yeah. this is me now. So lockdown come. The first bit of lockdown was amazing. Like like everybody, I was looking at the TV screen like, please be locked down. Please be locked down. Please not go back to work. Yeah. Please just add another ten days onto onto. Right. And which is probably a bit of a bad mindset, right? But it's just like I don't really want to go back into the office. Waking up, working from home is fun because you basically did nothing. Started to like train in a gym, uh, started to train in the garden, go for runs. The missus stayed with me, but me and the missus were fairly new then. Okay. So this is quite a weird point where I was like, well, boom, like, is this going to work out? Is she the one? All right, let's just go with it. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, it was good to start, but the clothing business was picking up. But then I thought, oh, this is done for now. Like everybody's stuck in. People mm. are buying for me to go out, but no one's going out anymore. Mm. Mate, it was the complete other way. Yes, guys, just another gentle reminder that now we, the Graph Kings, are sponsored by IPAM. We want to give you more insight into their website and what they do. Ignite take pride in every transaction they do. They treat your commercial and residential property as it's their own. IPAM see it as a privilege to make sure that the buildings they manage thrive for their owners and first and foremost, but also for their occupiers. IPAM specialise in residential and property lettings. Our bespoke services including the market valuation, vetting potential tenants, conducting viewings, running checks and making sure that the right tenant is suitable for your property. So guys, make sure you check out their socials. Again, thank you iPad for sponsoring us. Now let's get back to the show. I think I was making more money there on a daily and weekly basis than I am now. Why do you think that is? I, mate, because people- I'm more expendable like cash. Yeah. On holiday. Pe- people That's that were why. reckless with their cash were being more reckless. People that didn't have money now had money. Yeah. People that were clever were getting all these bounce back loans. Yeah. yeah Self-employed yeah, 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 yeah. people were understanding the coup to just get loads from the government. Correct. And people were like, okay, cool. Well, we are going to be able to go out at some point. Yeah. Mm. And mate, we was doing like, I'm no word, I'm not, no, I'm not even exaggerating, like 20, 30 orders a day. Damn. And the, and and it was just like, could you keep up? Do- What's that? Could you keep up? Yeah, because I'm, I'm at home. I'm stuck at home. But then so what where that, are you finding the clobber though? Just networking. Now I'm now I'm reaching out to suppliers overseas that had minimum spends because now I had money. Yeah, and it was just like, I was always scared to buy stocks. I missed that at a big point. When I tried to kickstart my page, I went and bought a massive parcel of Alexander McQueen's. Didn't really know anything. And this is one thing we don't say to our members. Yeah, don't go and buy a stock early on because it's the biggest risk. Because if I don't sell that stock, I'm doomed. Yeah, right? dead, dead weight. I had seven and a half K. I went and put it into stock and it just didn't sell. Oh. But then it was like all of my money at that point, I was happy to invest because mm. that, that, that 50K at the start had now gone and I mm. went and done things. Now I've got a car that I had to pay. I don't even know why I bought the car. And I've gone and bought these Alexander McQueen's, but now I've got no money. And all I found myself doing was posting the same shoe every single day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That, that I had, it, they were- It was all in one basket. So you just bought loads, all that money I bought, just went, Yeah, I bought a massive parcel. Of the same on, thing. On one, yeah, yeah. On one, oh, wow. in, in it. But I had worked it completely different. I worked it, I thought I'd be able to sell it, worked out my margins. Then every single retail store done a massive discount on Alexander McQueen's. Oh, fucking so hell. now I'm like, fuck. You know what's the only reason I bought McQueen's? To make me taller. <laughs> Man, I, used to hate, I, mean, I hated them shoes, yeah? And it's like anything. I used to hate Dior B30s. Now I've got every single color. I used to hate B22s. Yeah. But it's like you fall in line with fashion trends yeah, and cool. I have to wear this stuff in this game. And then I remember it was this one random guy DM me on Instagram. I thought, yes, mate, random sale. Because yeah. Yeah. everyone I was selling to was people I knew. Mm. Or like referrals, as I said. Yeah. And this is before trend sourcing still weren't a thing then when I bought this. This is unlimited fashion, it was okay. called. And it's fine, it's funny because I gave that name to one of my blueprint members. So one of my blueprint members has actually got the name and we edited his logo, he's, he's got it now. Perfect. And um one guy, random guy, he was like, Bro, no one wants to effing buy these shoes. Because I was posting them every day. And like what I was then doing is I was taking t-shirts out of my wardrobe that would match the Alexander McQueen's and now try and create outfits. Yeah. And I end up just losing money, I end up just selling them and then just just losing loads of money on them. And then from that day, I was like, I can't buy stock, man. 
Learn I don't, I, mate, I think I've still got two pairs somewhere, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, in storage somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely, definitely got to. Because I was, I was sitting there the other day to my missus. Like, do you remember when we had a stack of Alexander what colour? Queens? Mate, they're probably red. I've definitely got them oh, somewhere. I've got the red ones. Yeah, I had I red, like... green and blue. They're all white with a suede at the back. Mate, they were, now look at it, they were disgusting. Yeah, horrible. Um, so I sort of shied away from stock, but lockdown come, I was like, cool, I need to do something now. Because like, I, I resold hand gels. So when it come about, I started to see people resell hand gel so I was going into every off license in, in my area buying hand gels for like £2.50 putting them on eBay for £7 you definitely sold the masks and as well wasn't it no I couldn't get them no okay couldn't get them. I couldn't get them mate it <laughs> was the, the I don't know what they N95s. were N95s what the hand the, oh, I thought you were about masks no, no these were the hand sanitizer All I was right. going into Sainsbury's Tesco's everything just for like fun and I put them on eBay mate they were selling for like 11 99 that's mad. And then I got banned from eBay. Yeah, it went on the news. Like everybody oh, stopped selling. Yeah, stop. Stop. Because uh, you're pro- profiteering off a pandemic. Is yeah, that off a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Mate, I bloody loved it. And then I yeah. thought, late into this day, I wish I did it. I thought, oh, let me go into a um, doing the face mask and everything. But I couldn't find the supplier. So I was like, you know what? Cool. Let's try and build up the Instagram again. So I'm still mm-hmm. getting inquiries. I was drop shipping from flannels online now. Mm-hmm. So people like the art of personal shopping, right? Is to take the legwork out of your shopping experience. Okay. Ninety percent of my clients don't go online. Right, yeah, so right. like 90% of my clients will come to me because I'm convenient. I'm a one-stop shop. Bro, I'm going to Ibiza tomorrow. What can you find me? I do the legwork, charge a premium. That's where I make money. You haven't got to do anything. Yeah. Tell me your size. Tell me what you like. I'll do it. People that last minute, yeah? People that I'm going tomorrow. Yeah, all the time, They're bro. They're millionaires, isn't it? They don't get fired. Right, yeah. right, all all the time. People shit. call me up, be like, trend. I'm going to Ibiza tomorrow. What fits have you got? Now, unlike many personal people, we stock a lot of stock. Okay. Because I've always enjoyed stock now. Like yeah. Before I didn't like it, couldn't sell it now. I buy, I buy more than I sell easy. Fine, okay. So like lockdown was there, so I was going on websites and I was still making money and then I was networking. Then I got a really good supply, Javonchi supply, got him on board and then I was just buying loads of that, selling it, then D squared. And when then you I- say these suppliers, just in general, just for our own benefit, I'm interested. When you say you get these suppliers, are these people direct that work for Givenchy? Like, do they work no, direct so I was for just, brands? Mate, I was just going online and typing designer supplier and then you like, they're still around now, like Italian suppliers that are like minimum spend. Um, and you do the minimum spend, didn't know about that, I was paying that. Mm. But where lockdown was so good, I was charging good premiums to a point where I could make money. Mm-hmm. But then I built relationships with other shoppers that okay. didn't want to help me sort of scale, but were like, look bro, we've got this available. So like Henry Chadwick's always had Labutin, it's cheaper than retail. Yeah, so what I would do is- How? I would, I, but this is the thing, before I got into retail, I thought all his stuff was fake because I never really oh, see wow. the below retail part of it. So I thought, how are these personal shoppers getting stuff below retail? I'll get, ni- I'll get 90% of brands below retail. Dior below retail, we get Louis Vuitton below I, I, retail. I'm, I can't get about, yeah, I don't know where that comes get, from. How? So just from like relationship building, I always networked. Every opportunity now. Yeah, but who's selling then? Obviously you can't give away supplier. No, of course, I'm not asking give, who directly. Give away the gems. Yeah. Yeah. Join the blueprint. If you want to know. Yeah, that's it, yeah, that's it. <laughs> always no. closing. But it's mad, right? Because I've got discounts in stores and I've got friends that work in these stores. They don't know about the discounts. Wow. Fucking I hell. won't talk too much about yeah, the discount because yeah, 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 a lot cool, of them are cool, quite cool. like sort of yeah, like no, hush. No, no. But like, for example, Selfridges, I go like, oh, yeah, bro, I get X amount. He's like, no, you can't, bro, I work here. No, no, bro, I do. Yeah, but we've got an allowance. No, bro, I could rack up 10, 15 grand if I wanted to. That's All legitimate, true. of course. Like nothing's yeah. dodgy yeah, about yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So anyway, lockdown come, I was making loads of money, making loads of money. And then we secretly went back into the office and all I could think about was being on my phone. Like, mm. I would sit up until early hours. The would be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, got another sale. Got another sale. Got... Like, mate, it'd be like three in the morning, yeah? And I'd be awake. I'd wake up and I'd start packaging t-shirts. Like, it's weird. It's like, a buzz. I'd, I'd, Good yeah, buzz. proper. But this yeah, is when yeah. love come back and I felt like I was that 15-year-old again selling trainers. Yeah. And then she, the, 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 like, my missus to me, why don't you just go, like, do it? Like, mm. push it more. Not leave your job. Because she was like, no, don't leave your job. Like, well, whatever you do, don't do that, right? And in my head, I had a game plan. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cream my my nine to five because I'm getting it right. Like, I'm not doing any work. Yeah, I was cool. getting slated all the time for KPIs. Legally, they can't <laughs> sack me, right? Because it's because it's COVID. Yeah, so yeah. let me just drum this, drum this, drum this. I just went heavy on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok going about. Then I just went heavy, heavy, heavy. The rebranding happened. Yeah, I was now trend sourcing. The logo concept. Where did that come from, sorry, bro? Do you know? I don't know, bro. No, just I like don't that, know, yeah. man. Yeah, I, like, I don't know. I don't know how. And someone said this to me the other day because we help our members make logos, right? Like, mm-hmm. bro, how did you get your logo idea? I don't know. I don't know. I, I remember. So we was called on. I was called on limited fashion, and I remember I wrote down loads of names: trend sourcing, personal shopper styling. I was like trend sourcing. Find the trend. We like you want a trend, we'll find it. Boom. Mm. Black and white concept. Sense, yeah. Sick. Like my logo before that was terrible. It was a free one. I don't know if anyone's ever seen a free logo. It's like gold man with shopping bags. No, it's no, the most common fun. free logo ever. Yeah. And I posted it up the other day, and it was like, and then I come up with a slogan. My slogan is "Day personal shop, we make shopping personal." I don't know how I found that. <laughs> And now when I look it's at my logo, the logo, I'm not just yeah. saying it is my company. No, 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 of course. The logo is lit. The slogan is lit. 
like to a point where people like try and copy the concept, but I trademark that. That's mine now, right? Yeah, That's man. sick. Which now and why I trademarked it is why I come to it. So anyway, twenty twenty one come, and it mate, it just come randomly. I woke up one morning and I started to drive into work because not everyone was going in. The roads are quite quiet. Um, and I typed in, I always used to do, and I still do this now, like entrepreneurial um, motivational, because I started to get quite demotivated, not fall into a line of depression because that, that were not a thing, but it was like, oh, no, I'm really hate my job, but I'm scared to leave it because it's that safety aspect. Yeah, it. And that's why people do nine to yeah, five. Yeah, so yeah. I remember every day I'll type in, like, you know, you get in memory with people and they're like, you can do this, go and like, <laughs> it was these two random Australian guys, don't know the podcast, don't know what they are. And he talked about, he's like, he's like, bro, I just, I just fucking did it. If it didn't work, it didn't work. If it worked, it worked. Now my tech company's worth multi, like multi millions, but they were on a podcast. Yeah. And my missus is funny. I put it out. Don't know if anyone see it on my Instagram story, but my missus has the chat. I said to her, I'm doing it. And she I, said, I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this up on the side a little bit more. And then I'm going to transition. I said, but I can't do both. Yeah. And she's got that mission. I put it up the other day and it was like, I can't do both. I can't juggle both. I'm going to build it up and then I'm going to transition. And I text my manager. I was like, mate, look, when we, when we get into the office, can we have a little chat? Didn't think anything of it. I said, "Look, like, bro, like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand in my resignation," and he was just like gobsmacked. Really? Because I was such a, I was a lover of the company, man. I showed, showed up every single day. I was standing up mm. every day. I was that guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. I was like the, the best on the floor, <clears> man. <throat> I was that guy. I come with that East London energy. Mm. Everyone was from Kent and Essex, and everyone was like, "Who is this kid walking around with a headset on, kicking a ball about, getting deal?" It was like Wolf of Wall Street. Mm. Like you said, just you know, like Wolf of Wall Street. We yeah, used to just sit there, like locking that trade, looking at like he's mad, mate. The office, yeah. <laughs> and it was just like. I, I handed my resignation and then I remember doing it and I went home and I was like, oh, come on, what the fuck have I just done? I was like, I can't go back now, but I don't think I've done the right thing, man. Because it's all like, I'm a very heat the moment guy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like the whole Dubai movie is like, you know what, we're going to go to Dubai? Cool, we're going to Dubai. I I'm not going to regret that. I'm not, not going to regret that because I love the country and I know I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to make it out there, right? But I remember sitting down and I remember like, my dad was like, you've left. Is like, yeah, that like, we can do, <laughs> like, do full time? I was like, I'm, like, I'm going to like, sell clothes but I was making really really good money here yeah because I was doing money from lockdown lockdowns now stop but I've built up so many clients and relationships online mm. I'm now taking opportunities to go meet these people I want to get in front of them so I'm turning up to value, off, yeah yeah, mate. yeah so even after work I was going to VIP clients and I, like, I had clients that were doing 20 30 grand at a time Fucking that hell, I was insane. going there with boxes of stock wow. and they were going I'll take it all walking out of there mate with like wads of money like bank transfers and thinking like mate what the hell did your bank never get frozen and shit Bro, I'm blacklisted by NatWest, TSB, <laughs> no, no, but like, yeah, NatWest, TSB, Halli every high street bank. Fuck. I knew it, because I knew it. at 15, I was just doing all my sneaker sales into my account. Mm. And then it was like one That's branch right, manager, yeah. at NatWest, Asian guy from my area, pulled me in. He went, I want to invest. I said, what do you mean? He went, bro, is this like what you're doing is insane here. And he actually then started to buy trainers for me and flip them. Oh, and right. he, <laughs> but oh, he, yeah, I swear to you, bro. He, oh, was he, he, he got some of the Alexandra McQueens and he's like, I want to, he's like, I want to invest. I was like, no, I was like, but, and this is really weird because I, I've never actually thought about this. I was like, I'll help you do it. Now the blueprint is now a business that's doing really, really well. I was like, I'll help you do it. So I was yeah. like, look, he's like, what do I do? I was like, look, set up an Instagram account. Do what I'm doing. Weren't you worried about the competition? I've never been worried about competition, man. I always look at my competition and I look at, I don't look at what they're doing right. I look at what they're doing wrong. Mm. And then I make mine better. And I might look at something they're doing right. Because I always believe in copy what works. Yeah, 100%. With yeah. content, yeah. And I say this, you have to like, be like, no, I don't want to copy him. No, copy what works. Yeah, if that video has got 2.5 million views. It's for, for a reason. reason. Do yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. have and to like, reinvent the and, wheel, and, man. And I'll be honest with you. Like, we're, we're, we're putting videos out on my account at the minute. Coin flips. I'm copying jewelers in Hatton Gardens because I'm seeing 25K, half a million views, 2 million views. Yeah. So now when I'm going to meet certain clients that I know well, I'm like, bro, should we do a coin flip? Just tweak it. Like the bill's 4.5K. Look, if I win, I'm not 200 pound. If you win, you got to give me 200 pounds. Sorry, what's a coin flip? I know you're So saying. like, say you're buying something from me. Yeah. yeah. I might go, you know what? Let's do a coin flip. If I win, you've got to give me 250 pound more. If you win, I'll take 250 pounds off your bill. <laughs> and these are like, obviously clients have got good relationships. Yeah, of course. With. Some of which, listen, I'm not going to lie, some of which we're, we're, we're at. That's a yeah, sick like, We're idea. at just for content. Nice. But some of which are actually real. Like if I buy from other resellers, I'll be like, should we do a coin flip, bro? It's quite common in the game now. Like he actually said it to me. He's like, yo, bro, you want seven, I want seven twenty. let's flip a coin. I'm like, yeah, yeah cool. Nice. But then I'll be like, I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. to, my, I'll be like to my missus, I'll be like, get the camera out. Don't <laughs> get his face on my face, just get the camera out. And like, we put one out the other day, it's done like 25K views. And like content is such a massive thing. So like copy what works. But when you said that worry about competition, no, nah, because I was arrogant in the, in the thing that, that this is my space. Mm. This is my game. Good man. Yeah. And, like, and, and that ties back into the blueprint. It's like people say to me all the time, oh, bro, you're oversaturating the market. Oh, bro, why are you helping people? Because why There's not? There's so much to go around, yeah, man. Why not, yeah, man? So Do you know what I mean? Because I remember around. me at 17, 18, DMing the big boys. Hi, bro, I really want to get into the game. Can you help? Nah, bro, the game's saturated. Nah, bro, I can't help you. These same people now buy from me. 
Do, 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 do you see what yeah, I mean? Who so was the first in the game? It was Miss Undivided, wasn't it? He was Undivided like, was killing the game, still does. Still doing. He like, was what, one of the first. Like, yeah, one of the yeah. first. Him and Henry Chadwick's were the ones that I always see. Like The guy that owns Undivided, obviously, now owns your world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was the one that was like, cover your face, um, Range Rover. Like, he used to take, everyone will remember, he used to take pictures of shoes on top of a bin. Yeah. With like, do you ever remember? Yeah, yeah, I do. And he was like, the bootings, he was like, he was everything. And that, yeah, it was, was like, I was like, I want to be like him. That's the first I remember as well. And like, he's done so well for himself. Yeah, 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 like absolutely killed it. But then that like, we'll go into it and you say like, what do I see in the future? Like personal shopping is a massive tool to open so many doors. Personal shopping has now allowed me to create my blueprint. And I'm in a situation now with the kind of clientele that I've got, if I didn't need investment, I'm covered. Yeah, yeah if I needed to go into property, I've got clients that are, are property millionaires. If I wanted to go like, my Dubai move has come from clients. Like. Uh, the, the property that I'm potentially going to move into has come from a client introducing me. My business partner was a client. Network. Like, yeah, like the, the space that Everything, I'm in. Isn't it? Yeah, I, like, I could go create a brand if I wanted to because all my VIP clients and my athletes and my high net worth people, will, um, it's me. Yeah, 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 wherever I move is my personality and they know they're going to move with, like, they're going to move with yeah, me. Yeah, of course. But back to what we were saying about like, me leaving. So I've now left the job, regretted it, but I did it. I, I asked to stay there for a month because I, I loved the company. I was like, look, I'll stay here for one more month as a leaving period and whoever you bring in, I'll mentor. So I'll become like a manager to a certain extent, manage this person. But my manager knew, like he was like my, like, still is my pal. He's actually got an office in my building. It's re- mad, Fuck. mad, mad story. So I see him all the time and he's like, um, listen, don't like, listen, just go for it, mate. Just like crack on what you gotta do. Just show up, bring the same energy. We know where, like, we know where you're set. Cool, long story short, first Monday's come. Yeah, I'm now all prepped. I'm, I'm always, I'm always up at 5 a.m. I find myself, I get up at 4 a.m. now, I train. And I don't really go to sleep, right? Because it's passion. I love what I do. First day come, um, I was about a week in. And then it was one morning I woke up and I was, my pal messaged me. He's like, bro, hat. He's like, bro, is this you? I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, that's not me, man. Three fake trend sourcing accounts have now popped up on Instagram. Oh, wow. 150K followers. Yeah, I'm now bro. getting, bro, you you scammer. Bro, I'm going to smash your face in. Bro, I know where you live. But I'm like, whoa, this is coming through to my, my yeah. inbox. Yeah, my inbox. I'm like, mate, what is going on here? Like another one's now turned up. I'm now getting DMs to my personal Instagram. Harley, listen, bro, I'm we're, we're, we're gonna take over your whole business. And it was just like boom. Like whole Instagram account got impersonated. Whoa. I had no leg to stand on. And that was like first few weeks in, I'm like, mate, this is just this is this is this is absolutely much, fucked. Yeah, 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 this is fucked, man. And I, I it got to a point where I couldn't handle it, man. I feel like you're watching over your shoulder as well, probably. Like, mate, it was mate, home. it was nuts. Like, like oh, mate, I went to the police, right? And they're like, we can't do anything. Yeah, it's IP, it's shit. this, it's that, and it's yeah. just like and I, I've left my job now, right? And now my account's getting impersonated. We was getting no sales because what this person was doing is they were scamming somebody, blocking you. And then when you try and find them again, I turn up. Yeah, because fuck. they've got so many yeah. followers, they've done so well, right? So then that happened. Then my account went down and then they disappeared. Then they come back. So like, it hasn't been an easy journey, right? Yeah. Like, it hasn't been an easy journey at all. And it was just like, I was out grabbing my bedroom. So I was like, okay, what do we do now? So then built like a built an office in built an office in the gardens and I was working out of a like working out of my shed. Yeah, yeah. But I was still pushing you. I told myself, listen, you're gonna make this work. You know who your clients are. Mm. Let's just let's just go with it. Let's let's just keep powering on. We're gonna do it every day. Scam, 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 scam. But I don't know how to tell people it's not me. I don't want to show my face. Yeah. And then it got to a point where it disappeared a little bit, and it was one of my pals. He's like, bro, you're gonna have to get up. You're gonna have to get up and speak, man. And I like, bro, I ain't showing my face, man. I don't want to show my face. And then the whole reason why is because you're in this space, like, you know how people are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, look, I've got two options. I've now become un- I'm unemployable, right? I've become unemployable because I don't want to work for somebody. The way I think is I will take over your business. And that's how I felt in recruitment. Mm. It was like I either leave and set up a recruitment firm or I do what I love. The recruitment side of things, I actually set up on company's house, a cleaning firm. And then I was going to go for that. I was going to set up a recruitment cleaning firm. Didn't end up doing it. Went full time with what I was doing. And, and then it's just been history ever since. So I, I, I put my face out there. I haven't stopped putting my face out there. People know me. Um, and then last year, based on the success of that, the business, it, we just went up. It just done, it was just doing like, it's, it's gone so well since. Do you since you've my face, you, million percent. That's because you've tried the yeah, price. Yeah, because you come on my profile, personal, right? Yeah. No. Not a unique. They know who they're dealing with now. Though. Yeah, exactly. People like called, they, they, they now know me online. Yeah. They know it's me. And then TikTok come about. We started putting our face on TikTok and I was meeting clients mm-hmm. and, it's just gone up every ever since. And your content now is sick. I was watching a video the other day when you put up with um, Connor Ben. Yeah, yeah. Like, that video, yeah, just that, that, that was sick video. But like even that, we got. I think we got Connor on because we showed our face. Yeah, it probably. Is. And Connor Ben, so he knows like, who he's dealing with. Yeah, we didn't give him free stuff. No. He he actually, I, I don't know how he come about. Actually, I think 
I, I went to a um, open workout, you'll call, and it was Conor Ben versus somebody else. And I think mm-hmm. I, I tagged him on my trend sourcing account. Yeah. Give it a whole like, oh, he's a client. Take he it loves, till you make it thing. Well, and he like, see it. Yeah. And then he asked about a Gucci polo and Gucci loafers. And yeah. I actually lost money on the loafers I did. But I didn't give him anything for free. But I did the whole lost money strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ever since, he's been an advocate of the company. Like his, his dad shouts us all the time. Like the uh, Ben and Eubank fight, we was there till the very end. Well, I mean, at the hotel when the guy come in and said, "Look, I don't think he's gonna go ahead." We was styling outfits up until then. Wow! And like, wow. He, yeah, like we was there, mate. Every we were on Matrim, we was on Matrim uh, YouTube thing. But then people started to recognize me, and people started to now come to the page and trend sourcing this, trend sourcing that, and then we just blew. Nice. And that's what then stemmed the other company, which is obviously my blueprint account. Do you nice. feel? Do you feel like now that the fact of where you are and obviously what you do, you always have to kind of look to drip yourself. Like, could you go to Zara and wear something nice, or do you always have to wear designer clothes? Yeah, no, no, no. Like, I wear Arnie all the time, right? Like, yeah. like even even the Trope tracks. I get more compliments. Shout out Trope. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for my modelling contract. Yeah. I'm waiting for the uh, for some more free bits, but I get more. <laughs> I have to wear designer clothes. Yeah. But do you know what it is? It's like, this stuff is expensive, right? And the way that mm. I look at people go, your wardrobe must be insane. It is, but I look at this stuff as money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just mm. like, a, like, nobody gets high on their own supply. So I will keep it. I'll do this all the time. I'll keep something and I'll purposely leave it there and I won't wear it for a little while. And then I'll end up selling it because I know I can make 300 pounds on that. Yeah. Or okay. like, like these gray B30s, I'll, 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 I had them and I sold them and I bought them again. I was going to keep them, but then I end up selling them because I know that there's margin there. But Every time I now go to Ibiza, mm. I always spend quite a lumpy amount on clothes because I'm walking advertisement. Yeah, yeah, of yeah if a dentist That's said to I mean. you, I can give you veneers, but he's got smashed up teeth. Like the, the way the world works now, you aren't <laughs> yeah, gonna- So spot on. It's, it's not when you are like, so yeah. you yeah. are your brand. Yeah, so like, you are your brand. And how I do it now, and Ocean and I, the Ibiza scene has gen- boosted my business massively, right? Really, because yeah. people compliment other people. Yeah, mm. I'll throw your outfit, sick, boom, I'm on you now. Yeah, bro, like, I'll, I'll like take a business card. Or somebody goes, what do you do? I'm a personal shopper. Oh, I can tell. Like if you told me you was a personal shopper and you're just like in a, no disrespect, but you're just like in a measy t-shirt no, and a pair heavy too. honors, right? I'm going to think, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. But like, I'm not really taking you serious. It's like when you see PTs are out of shape. And yeah, like, fancy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, exactly that. So I do have to wear yeah. this. It's just a conversation. It like, I get sense. it all the time. Oh, bro, your shoes are sick. Where yeah. did you get them from? That's what people say nowadays, isn't it? And it's just like, perfect. Boom. Yeah. It's me, bro. I sourced it. What do you mean you sourced it? Oh, this is my company. Here we go. Bang in conversation. And like, company, yeah. last year was, yeah, last year was the first full year doing it. And that's when I knew that what I have I'm on something special here. Yeah. Turn it over seven, seven talk about fun, won't go like deep into numbers, yeah, but fine. last year is when I turned that business into a seven figure turnover business. Wow. And yeah, that wow. was me. Now I've got a team and I'm building a team and it's the hardest thing ever to build a team around this game. But I remember sitting there with my cannon at the time and he was like, bro, he's like, you need to get, I remember him ringing me, he's like, you need to get to property, bro. And he's like, right, like yeah. seven figure turnover business. And I remember telling my, uh, telling my dad this, right? And he's just like, nah, 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 yeah. And I was like, Dad, seven figure turnover business from selling trainers. I'm not a millionaire, right? I'm far, far from a millionaire because the, the turnover in my industry is always going to be higher. And that's mm. what people don't see. People are like, oh my days, bro, you've done seven figures, you're a millionaire. You must live in a mansion. It's not. It's a very high turnover business. Yeah. Yeah, like the high the, the, turnover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you see what I mean? Because I might yeah. sell a 30,000 pound Birkin bag. Mm. There may be two grand profit in two. that. Yeah, do you see what I mean? But you do 10 of them, that's 300K. Just that's that. only, yeah, yeah that's, that's only 10 grand profit, but that's what? a 300K. I see see people from TikTok they're buying like Birkin bags and that. they fly out to LA to just to sell them and stuff because yeah, they can yeah. make about a, why like, you got that guy ten grand profit yeah but yeah. Got, there's a buyer with a, with a Birkin would you ship that in the post like when yeah. I went to Dubai why did that person not just go online and buy it they can't no, buy you it. can't but see can't the, that is ties back into Connect, to, to, networks who you're not I've got you I've got you I've got you I've got you and again some of them just don't want to do it some it, of them they, have the, they some look at it I've seen people on TikTok they're looking at this thing they're saying thinking I can get this thirty grand I know I can sell it I know I can sell it I know I can sell it they buy it thirty grand. Haven't got a buyer, find a buyer and they make 10 grand. They fly to LA and just deliver it to them personally, make 10 grand. Yeah, we, we, we did that last week. So I, I go to Paris quite a lot. So you, like with Paris, I've got good connections out there and I get a lot of discounts, you yeah. say. And um, I ha- I got a bit of a tip off from one of my contacts in Hermes that there was a Kelly Depeche there, which is the clutches that you see everybody, I don't know if you've seen them, they're like the men's Birkins. Mm-hmm. It's the, the side clutches look like a bit like an envelope. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The retail of them is 7K, but they resell for 10. So you give me a bit of a tip off, but you can't just, you couldn't walk in there. So me and you walked in that same day. I know a certain way to speak. I know a certain thing to say. And I know my profile is going to allow me to get that piece. So we could walk in at the same time. You could go in before me. Yeah. And I, I do want to get this on camera as a social experiment. One and day. ask about it. And you would say, I want to Kelly Depeche. And they'll go, okay, cool. You got a profile? No, you're never going to get one. Got a profile? Wow. Look What's at a profile? profile? Instagram profile? No, your actual profile yes. with the brand. Uh, but oh, wow, see okay. with me, see with me, right? I'm, 
it's very there's loads of logistics to personal shopping right i've got multiple profiles and how i manipulate those profiles to make them uh, what's the word to make them verified in that sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you went in there and you're buying loads of random sizes on your profile, they're gonna look at it and they're gonna go size nine, six, seven, XL, double XL. No, nah, no chance. Then just not gonna bat, bat an eyelid because you don't look like you're enjoying the brand. You look like you're reselling or you're buying for somebody or you don't really know what you're buying or how you buy it. So <clears throat> my main profile with every single brand is A star. Like to me, well tailored to me, right? So I've gone in there and as you said there, I know my clients can't get it and I know the resell. The retail seven seven thousand pound. I the minute walked in there, knew it was available. He said, "Sir, there's one available." I'm just seeing, mate, just printed money, right? Quick, he's gone now to go and box it up. I've got the picture online. I put it onto my Instagram. Boom, sold straight to the sure, bank. Right. Yeah, nice. yeah, ten seven fifty that sold for. So three thousand seven hundred fifty okay, no, pound. Right. But then there's free clients in personal shopping. There's bargain hunters, which we can facilitate for. So a lot of my items are below retail. That would suit a bargain hunter. Then there's I don't care about the price tag. And then there's I'm lazy and I've got so much money. So, and we facilitate for all three of them. So bargain hunters, like all our B22s and B30s are below retail. So if you want to save money, you're going to benefit from my service. If you've got loads of money and you, you like, it's very clout in my industry, right? People love to say, he's my personal shopper. Mm-hmm. I'll go to my client's house. So a lot of my clients live in Essex mm-hmm. and Kent. It's a trick to come down to London, right? They don't know what's available. Like Goyard, for example, four stores in the world, no online presence. For you to get a bag from Goyard, you have to come into London and queue mm. and hope that they've got it available. Mm-hmm. I don't have to do that. Yeah, I've got Goyard on lock. My office is 20 minutes away from there. Every Belvedere, Juvens and Conti that goes into that store, I know and I'll get. And I'm taking the legwork out of you going to London. Is the bag available? So you will pay two, three hundred pound more. So then you've got bargain hunters that we've got. And then you've got, I really want the item, don't know how to get it. And I can't be bothered to come in. Yeah. And then you've just got that, that, that space of high net worth individuals, famous people and football players that, no, I'm not going to walk into Selfridges. Yeah. It's crazy how you just utilise from that specific thing yeah, right yeah. there, mate. And that's that's basically like what your business kind of relies on. Yeah, is the fact these type, the, the, there's these types of people. Yeah, yeah. You have to think as a buyer, right? Like, why would I? Why would they come to me? Yeah. Bargain hunters, you're going to come to me because I'm cheap in retail. People that are lazy are going to come to me because I'll do all the legwork. Mm. And then famous people are going to come to me or people that are, are, are occupying a busy business owners because you don't have time. I've got time. My job is to travel around the world and go to Paris, Milan and Rome and facilitate your demand. Yeah. I've, got the su- I've got the supply, you've got the demand, let's pair it and we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make loads of money and you're going to save loads of time. It doesn't seem that simple though, mate. So when it it's comes not, to, no, this so, game is stressful, man. So how transparent is that within your br- blueprint to people that obviously sign on? Straight away. Do, yeah, yeah. do you want to plug that? Do you want to tell everyone back home what your blueprint is? Yeah, what yeah. So the Trends Blueprint, I kickstarted last year, January sort of stemmed accidentally because people were bombarding me. Can you help me do this, bro? Can, can you supply? So how I did it is I would just supply like wholesale or bulk. Mm. I will just buy a little bit more extra volume and I'll sell it to another reseller or somebody that wants to get into the space. I wouldn't care what they done with it. I'll just make a margin. And then I sat there and it was one day like this, this random guy sent me like this massive paragraph of, oh, bro, you're smashing it, bro. You've done this. How have you done? Like bullet pointing. How have you done this, 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 and this? And I thought, wait a minute, if I put this into like a, a course or maybe like, and it was on a word, I sold it as a word document. It was the worst thing ever, right? <laughs> and I was like 150 pound. And he was like, yeah, bro, I'll buy it. So what I'd done is I just gave him like a list of stores and the discounts I could give him through me and this mm-hmm. is the kind of stuff that I got. And I said, look, bro, if you, if you struggle, I'll take a few images for you, 150 pound. And then I created the trends blueprint, called it the trends blueprint. Um, and I'll just post up about it. Like if you want to get into, looked at like the four, I looked at the Forex business model, right? And I was like, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You're lying. Mm. Yeah. I've got clients that are Forex traders and they tell me, <clears> yeah, I don't care to say it. They say, we don't trade. We make money off signups. I didn't want to give that approach. So back to what you said. Mm. I make it so transparent to everybody. You're not guaranteed to make money and the game isn't easy, but what you are guaranteed to get is my eight years worth of experience yeah. and my eight years worth of resources to go on board and actually make something of it. And I'm gonna, I help every single member along the way. Yeah. So I'm so transparent and probably too transparent to what I give our members. Yeah. But listen, I'm, it's my space. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's my space. I've got my clients and I will continue to scale and how many people are in the world? Like loads, do you know what I mean? And my network is different to their network and, and my friends are. So the Trends Blueprint is the ultimate online business educational platform that teaches aspiring resellers, whether they're new to the space or in the space, how to scale. Fundamentally, the blueprint on how I scaled my business to seven figures last yeah, year. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, and we Wait, do, we like, literally, we do everything with them. And we've got 170 members to date. Mad. Never That's run mad. ads. Never mad. run any ads until next week. So everything's been done organic. Yeah, lovely. We don't talk rubbish. Yeah, like, we don't, I don't talk about my lifestyle. You, and then, do you know what it is? All the reg, all the things that I should be doing, I don't. 
Mm. People are like, oh, bro, show your watch. Oh, bro, go and rent a Eurus. <laughs> oh, bro, go and do this. And I probably would get loads more people joined, but I'm faking a lifestyle. Yeah, do you know mm, what I mean? Like, I I've that. got 16-year-olds that, like, we're, we're, I've got a few boys on our blueprint that are like 17, 18 and just come out of youth offenders. And they're like, bro, listen, I either do what you're, you're saying to do or I'm going to go and sell drugs. And I've had people come out of prison. Old, like, the oldest person on our blueprint is around 50-odd. But we've had people come out of prison and go, bro, listen, like, I've seen what you do. I've seen it on TikTok. I want to get into the space. Bro, if it ain't now, I'm just going to go back inside. Yeah. Because there's no, no one's going to give me an opportunity, mm. right? And that motivates me more. And that's the reason I started the Blueprint, because I want to turn around in years to come. And it makes good money, right? Like the Blueprint does make good money. I'm not going to shy away from it. People say, oh, how do you make money? Well, yeah, you pay an enrollment fee, but then I've got agreements outside of the Blueprint, but don't infect anybody joining it. So I'm not, I don't want to pull your pants down. I want to pull the big boy's pants down. Mm. I want to show these big boys that if we spend a certain amount, I want to get paid. So don't affect anybody joining, but I get paid based on the success of myself mm. and our members. Clever, Makes man. Do, do, do you see what I mean? Oh, and it's, yeah. Very clever. It's a space that there's nothing out there doing it. And people copy us now. Like our content's copied. But then, you know what they say about people? Like if you, if you copy somebody, you've got to wait for my next move to then do your next move. Mm. And by the time right. I've done my next move, I've, like I've taken where, where you're going, I right? Like so... On, I honestly think the blueprint for me is more of the future. I was going to say. Yeah, more, more, like more of the more future of... for me. Because listen, I don't want to be 50, 60. Like, I'm always stressed, but good stress, right? Because yeah. this game is stressful. And I say it to our members. I was speaking to a watch dealer the other day. If you want to buy a watch, it's very simple. You either want a certain model, mm. a certain year, and it's there. If it doesn't fit you, I'll take some links out. Yeah. In my game, it's not like that. It's you want, I don't know if I'm size small. I don't know if I'm size medium. Is that t-shirt going to go with that shorts? I'm going to IB for I want to look like him. I want to look like her. Yeah. It's so stressful dealing with somebody because I'm fundamentally dressing you mm. and I need to make sure it's right. Like I've, I've had situations where good, good clients, I will go and 20, 30K worth of orders that I will front personally, mm. turn up, don't like it, bro. Oh. But because that client is so good and so big you can't, you and can't I can't really turn around and say, well, you've got to take it, I'm left. Do, do, do you see what I mean? So there's, there's, there's loads of L's that come with it, but then there's loads of reward that comes with it, right? Mm. If, you, if you've got the right price and, and the right work ethic, yeah. and, you, and the most important thing about any industry is enjoy it. Yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah you have to enjoy it, man. I say to that's every member, it, yeah. yeah, I always say that I'm stressed, and my missus always says, but you're always stressed. But I turn around and say, I love this. Like, I love being stressed. Like, if I'm sat there on a laptop just doing nothing, I'm like, no, no, I can't do this. I'm like, I want to be running around London, yeah. trying to find items, trying to get on the phone to clients, trying to sell this, trying to sell that. And then look at the time and go, bloody hell, it's midnight. And just go again. I can tell you love it. Just, just yeah, yeah. You, you are a born you're... hustler. Yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah. Born, yeah. Like, born, yeah like, born, are, like, yeah. But do you know what it is for me? And I think, because I'm scared to fail. I love because that. Because you see the way I think now, right? And um, I'm, I, as I say, just from a, a working class family, if I fail, I'm fucked. And that's no, like my mum my my and dad are the best mum and dad ever, right? My dad is, like, I look at my dad, my goal for my dad is to retire him. One of my bucket lists was to take my mum and dad to Ibiza. Like, yeah. they always go Ibiza, so we just come back from there. Best holiday ever. Paid for my mum and dad to go Ibiza. We was at Ocean, we was backstage, we, we, we went STK. At 23? At 23. They nice. tried to drag the, the, the old man to hire, but he won't have enough of it, right? <laughs> but um, my bucket list is, my mum works for me, so I haven't got to worry about that. She used to work at school, and uh, I didn't like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, she cooks and cleans for us, and then goes and cooks and cleans for other kids. Yeah. And I didn't like that. No disrespect to dinner ladies, but like, no, 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 your mum's a dinner lady. I you didn't really like that. So mom, my mum is the backbone of my business, man, from like, Love she, she, doesn't have a clue she, she doesn't have a clue what she's doing, right? Don't have an absolute clue. Don't know how to use a phone or a laptop. And she sent the old trainers to the wrong people and she does it every single week. Yeah, but it's, I love it. Do you know what I mean? But so that's, my mum will always be a part of the business. Uh, and she's like, now, because I'm moving to Dubai in January, she's like, oh, what about my job? Like the job is always going to be there, right? Oh, but it's like, she's like my business partner. Don't have a clue what you're yeah. doing. Don't know how to say brands. Like, <laughs> like, mate, it's That's nuts. Mumsy, but though, isn't it? Yeah, but I'll get Mumsy to go out and meet one of my good clients at uh, yeah, 9pm because like, I'm out. She's run out there. So like, like, they'll call up and be like, yo, bro, your mum just run out in a, in a, in a dressing, dressing gown. Dressing gown, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, she, she didn't give me a gift bag, bro. And I'm like, ah, oh, bro, sorry, man. But yeah, the goal for me is to try and like retire my old man because like, my old man's 55. He'd probably kill me for saying I don't think he is 55, but... Yeah, but he works on a building site, man. Yeah, I'm with you. Do you know what I mean? He's up at, like, mate, I'm, I'm driving back from a PT doors. session at 5.30 and I, every morning I see him bowl down, yeah. down towards Liverpool Street Station. And one day I'd love to just turn around and stop him. Yeah, and, yeah, that, yeah, that, and that is how I will do it. It's one day I will drive past and stop him and go, nah, not today, man. You're done. That's yeah, probably more rewarding yeah. than and that is probably. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah bro. And, that, and yeah. that's what I will do. And that is exactly how I'll do it. Yeah, man, wow. Because he even coming to the office today because he got, because of the weather, he's always rained off and he's just like, 
anything I can do. And I, 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 oh, I couldn't see me not. slotting him into the business, right? Because it's, I've got a scale. Yeah, of course. And it's just, I don't want to just create roles, but I think if I could turn around and go, look, what do you get paid now? Let me match it. Mm. Then that would be the best feeling ever. And yeah. then the goal would be like, with my move to Dubai, touch would it go successful and I'd stay there and that's me, would be then to have them move out there. Yeah, 100%. To have them move out there with me. Um, but I would say the blueprint is the future. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it, man. I mean, like we but they bounce before, off of so each other, right? Because yeah. the blueprint is only as successful as trend because they're buying into me and mm. I'm talking what I preach. Yeah. If I weren't, and I'm seeing other programs pop up now and like they don't do what they say. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, if you yeah. teach me how to trade Forex, but you don't trade, then it doesn't really make Change any shit. sense. But then there's a reason why those weren't last either as well. No, then, it, exactly it, that. It kind yeah, of yeah. Proves itself because the, pr- the proof is always in the pudding, right? So yeah, exactly. what you're teaching, most likely people will be wanting to come on through referrals to get people talking to each yeah. other. That's the strongest form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But the success from that is not even my success, the success of our members, right? Mm. We've had seven nine to five leavers. Wow. So seven people join the blueprint and leave to go full time. We've had people buy their dream houses, people buy their dream cars. People Mad. take their mum and dad on holiday. Like we've got, I've got a 16 year old that drove me about three months ago. He's done like 4K a month. And I'm like, how you done that bro? He's like, because we give them access to stock and content and then the power of social media, right? All these young people need is help. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. yeah that's all they 100%. need. And it, it, like the game isn't hard. <clears throat> it is hard, Teaching but craft, yeah. yeah, they just need somebody to sit down and say, bro, this is how you do that. Yeah. Don't complicate. Like, I'm not Bill Gates or anything like that. And that's what I say to these. I'm not saying you can be like me. I'm just opening the door to come on the journey with me. Mm. I have a, my business is nowhere near where I want it to be, but I've got 16 year olds that are doing three, four figures. I've got people saying that they don't want to sell drugs anymore. They now want to sell trainers because you can't make more money than th- those guys out there. You know, you've seen this. the involvement from where you're talking about earlier from the way that used to um, stand outside shops waiting for trainers. Yeah, yeah. And this, where do you see the involvement of this type of industry and business going? Like, where do you, how do you see it evolving into? Have you looked at think what? Right, that's gonna. That's what's coming next. That's, yeah, that's we've what's got. Yeah, I've got something in mind that I think will change the game. That I won't say because yeah, it will no, no, be cool. fairly quickly. Right. And do you know what's really annoying is that, as I say, I act in the moment, right? And every idea that I have can never work here, and that's why I'm moving to Dubai. Makes sense. I bought an office to bring clients into, and then when we moved into the office, we're like, Nah, what am I doing? I can't bring clients here. Like my office is super secure, right? Loads of cameras, but because of the society and the environment I live in, and it's London, yeah. I'm paranoid. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of yeah. And, and, and I do it all the time. And it was just like, I had a smart car before I got my car now. It's like, I'm going to brand that and make that a trend sourcing smart car. And I was like, I can't do it. Like, yeah. But um, I get so gassed about it. And then I've, I've got these really, really mad ideas that are being done in other industries. Mm-hmm. Nothing like what my industry is. They're doing it in the food industry. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if, if, that, if, if it materializes, it will be an absolute game changer. And the good thing is that nobody can copy it here. I hope it works out for oh, you, bro. Because yeah, if you I'm copy it here, you're going to get robbed. It's yeah. just the way the world works. That's That's right. Right. Are you going to claim residency out there? Yeah. Yeah, going to claim residency. Yeah. This, this is the thing. I'm like, moving to Dubai is scary, man. No, it's not scary because I'm looking forward to it. But it's like, what do I do here? Because do do? it's not like pack up and go, right? Yeah, it's course. not like you want to move to, you want to move house, you go and buy a house. Cool. You want to move to Ireland, go to Ireland. Yeah. There is very, very different. And it's a completely new environment. So yeah, we'll do residency. I want to go with a mindset that we're staying there and we're staying there forever. Because you've got all them tax benefits as well. Mate, tax benefits, but there's loads, but it's just like every time I go there. You're safe as ours is as well. Yeah, not Mate, even that. Can... I'm motivated because you're, do you yeah. know what it is? You're rubbing shoulders people. with the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can oh, yeah. be arrogant here, right? Like I could maybe walk around and go, oh, do you know what I'm doing? I'm, I will tell myself I'm doing well. You can't tell yourself you're doing well in the no, yeah, yeah, Somebody yeah, always yeah. doing better than you. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, was, I went to Nikki Beach with like my power that has introduced me to the whole pop up thing and I was like rubbing shoulders with people like me that were driving around in Euruses and got RMs on. I'm not saying that demonstrates success, right? But I'm talking they're to them. They're doing the same, right? And they're, they're my age, but you come back into London and you think, you know what, I'm smashing it, man. I'm 23, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing really well, I've got really good business. But then you go there and you're like, no, I, I should be that, doing yeah. more. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That and becomes you, a new norm for you. Yeah, and you could just bowl around, you know bro. as well. People over here, bro, as you'll know, especially down in the southeast, mate, everyone's neggy, bro. Mate, 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 no, no, no. The about... UK is neggy. Yeah, UK negative, yeah. bruv. The they're West. Not, they're not. They're not. They're not <laughs> gassed to see you doing well. They're not interested. <laughs> they're all they're interested in is what they can take from you. Yeah. They're, they're not saying like, tell me about your business, bro. How well are you? Everyone's doing? got an they're opinion. Like, yeah, they what they. It's always what can I get out of this comment? Do you know what I mean? Mate. Whereas places like that, they they'd rather sit there and listen to you talk and like yeah. tell them all about your business, and then they'd say, let me introduce you to somebody. Let me let me help you out. Let me try and do this. Over here, there's none of that, bro. Everyone's selfish and shut doors in front of your face. Yeah. And, and we're so narrow minded, right? That this, like, my power in Dubai that's been helping me and introducing me to people, I feel uncomfortable sometimes because I feel like, what does he want? Mm. What have I got like, to do? Like, there's an ulterior motive. Yeah, but then when yeah. I speak to him, he's like, bro, I don't want anything, bro. I'm older than you, you're younger than me. Like, just, just smash it. Or if you get big clients, it's going to benefit my business, right? 
he does cards, watches, and things like that. He's like, look, if you get a big client, my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah, he's like, if I get a big client, I'm going to dive them into you. And like, I met him in Feb. We've done a pop up, and that was thanks to my pal Ed, who's like a little bit older than me, who owns like massive, massive company as well. And he's like, we done met in February, done a pop up in in June. And he's created 59 group chats. Wow. And that's me, him introducing, and I mean, he ain't introducing me to, oh, this guy lives down and works in real estate. No, this guy is a multi-millionaire from Bahrain, from Amsterdam that needs a personal shopper, bro. What do you want? I don't want anything, man. Have you ever felt like people around you have changed towards you though since like you've... Um... Got success. Yeah, got success. I haven't let them because I've outgrown them before they've, before they've tried yeah. to switch on me. Love right. that. And it's like, like so the, the kind of friends that I had, I used to roll out quite... 30 man deep BMX think I was a man look at me and I'll give you a dirty look back because I know that I'm with 30 boys yeah I, I weren't that guy but I was just and now I've probably got five pals handful of friends yeah. yeah but these are pals that it's not like yo bro yeah we, we're going out and getting messy this weekend it's like cool should we link up go spa go gym I've got this business idea let's talk yeah, yeah that there motivates me bro or yeah, I'll yeah, check yeah, in yeah. like one of my good pals who's a PT just like he's going from strength to strength to strength normal people in our area will see that and go no, nah, fuck. Like they, they would hate success, right? Of course. Or we said it. To, we said it before the podcast. Yeah. I want to be like you. Yeah. Hate see, that, <laughs> bro. See that there? That furiates me because I'm no one special, and all I'm doing is working and grafting. And yeah. what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing those nights out and those messy sessions while yeah. you're on a, doing a smart whip on a Friday night. Yeah. I'm thinking about how am I going to scale my business, and I work constantly. But well, that's and I'm too possessive. Yeah, yeah. That's the, why you have my missus says it all the time. You always work. You know, I don't watch films. Now, this is a massive thing about me, bro. I don't really. The only film I've ever watched full is Wolf Wall Street. I was gonna say, I've never watched. I've never watched Harry Potter, and it's like funny because like, we we'll go like we'll have a Sunday roast with the family, and everyone will be talking about films. Like, oh, but yeah, that's from that film. And like, do you know? And like, no, because I don't. I just constantly think of new ideas. I can't sit. I can't really? sit still. You have ADHD? Yeah, I have. I have. Bro. I have. I have. Like, and see the way I think about it. If I sleep in till seven, eight, eight, eight a.m. Yeah. on my bum. That's the way I think. Really? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. I, need to, Sunday, I need to adopt that. Yeah, but like it, right, it happened the other day. I was laying on the sofa and it was like 11 in the afternoon. I was just chilling on my phone. I thought, wait, what are you doing, man? Get up, go to the office. So I just went in the office, sat there on my laptop, right. like actually doing things. But then these things that people look at, like, bro, you need to let your hair down, or bro, you need to like come and see the boys. Listen, the when I'm that, 30, go, 40, go and on, I'm retired, on, bro, yeah. and or not retired, but 30, yeah. 40, and I, yeah. I don't want to be like my dad is now, no disrespecting, but stressing about money every yeah, single yeah. Every, every month. Yeah, and working from paycheck to paycheck because that's how that generation was. Yeah. yeah. What, do, what does success look like to you though? Like, what, at what point do you think you can kind of put your feet up, lit that cigar and go, I've done it? Because it, it sounds like to me, I feel like you'll get to 34, you won't retire because you're so... And that's yeah, I don't think I ever will, bro. A lot of people semi-retire and they yeah. just crack on. Because... I don't think I ever will. I don't, I don't think I ever could. And it was how I kept saying that even when I gave up reason, I kept tying back to it because I knew it made money, right? And I, I mm. actually love it. Success to me would just be nice house, being able to wake up in the morning, check in on my businesses that are doing well, maybe pass my business down to, it's, you know, it's a really hard, it's, it's hard, success to me would just be sort of like, your answer now will change in five years. Yeah. And it will change again. Yeah. yeah. Like, bro, years, you ask like, me next week, I'm, I'm going to turn around and go RM, Eurus, yeah, massive yeah. gaff in Dubai, cigar, strawberry daiquiris, right? <laughs> but then realistically, when I think like long term, it would be like, Holidays with a family, yes, nice yeah. big house, That's... checking on my businesses that are just being run, yeah. that passive income, yeah. property portfolio, and I am traveling, just double checking in all the businesses and they're all running fine. Because right now, you, yeah. I'm like spinning the blueprint plate, spinning the, the plate, and then I'm thinking of like loads of other ideas, how I can do this, this, and this. Whereas if I had like a team that I could check in on and just build other, like build for my yeah, I, yeah as you said, there, it's, that's it's such a change. hard question, right? Like, no, it is, what does success it look is. like? It's, it'll yeah. change, bro. It'll I tell you change. what, when we uh, eventually move all of our pod gear to Dubai and we become residents, we'll do a part two and you part can tell two, us. Yeah, part yeah. two, yeah. Dubai part two, I think would be insane. 100%. We'll make that where we're, where we were from this conversation to now what's come to fruition. We'd yeah. be in swim shorts and sliders. Love it. Come on, guys. Cigar, Zachary. Come on, guys. Convert, got the beer. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim now. On a real though, man, I know that like, before you, I think you, I think you have a bit of a, um, imposter syndrome like you didn't really want to you didn't know if you was at the right stage to do a podcast or, or not before let me tell you something that was one of the best podcasts we've ever done uh, that's yeah, one of yeah, the best no, conversations I've ever had yeah. Yeah. and do you know what it's, 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 it's weird because people always say bro you're so sick but I would never see that right Yo, I, that's I, I, get, bro, I get funny with compliments somebody like I went out the other day and my, some of my missus friends have seen some of like, my TikTok they're like you're smashing it I don't know what to say to that man because I don't think I am just say thank you yeah yeah, yeah, do you know, yeah I'm, that's oh, it yeah, yeah, you are very um you are a very inspirational. Uh, don't, I won't say now. I won't say. But you are a very inspirational guy. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate. I think that. people watch this, especially the, the young this... generations here that watch us. I think will absolutely feed off of what you've just said that, there, and you'll the give people to pick up yes. the arsenal. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the only reason I said yes because I, I don't want to come on here and say, oh yeah, I'm, I watch podcasts before and they just talk about them and how they're this guy and that guy. Mm. The moral of this whole me coming on is just to show people. Obviously, expose my businesses as well. Of and course. Promote course. the business, of course. I'm not going to sit here and shy away from it, but also show people that, like, it's possible, man. Do you, do you know what I mean? And like, even with, like, the blueprint has shown me that as well. Like, I can sit there with younger... Like, I speak to 16-year-olds that want to be bosses. That's not normal, man. That turn around and go, I don't want to work for somebody. At 16, yeah. saying that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that motivates me. Yeah, man. 100%. That motivates me massively. But, um... No, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you coming. Mate, on, you, mate. You, yeah. Your whole thing aligns with our values. Yeah. We are, we call ourselves the Graft Kings for more reasons than one, and one of them is grafting to try and get. You, you made get, me yeah. feel lazy. Yeah, you made me feel you really lazy. Feel lazy. Join the blueprint, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Join the blueprint, man. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not. That's what I want, though, bro. Like not to make you. Not to no, make not at all, bro. No, no, I no. want someone to sit there and go. You know what? I maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm kick not myself up the ass. Yeah, that person. I'm up at six every day in the gym, and you've made me feel fucking lazy, still, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. In a good way. In an absolutely. In a good, good way, way. Really like, good like way. A hundred million percent, mate. Like if you've made, like we work hard, but then sometimes I look, I think after we can be working you talk, harder. Could I be well, after more? listening to you talk, I'm like, how hard do you work? Like really, how hard do yeah. you actually work? Like your work ethic is second to none, mate. And like we, like I say, we do work hard, what we think we do, and you've you've made me want to give us a kick up the ass. Mm. So I can only imagine everybody watching this as well going, mm. fuck me, I need to wake myself yeah. up. Mate, then my purpose so is to feel you for that. Then, man. Because yeah. that, that's exactly what I wanted. Shout out to Yaz. Yaz is actually Yeah, Yaz is actually yeah. And I had known Yaz long as well. And that shows like this space of track. That, that's the whole thing. Yeah, I want to now create a circle of just go-getters, bro. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Me and sure. Yaz are both under 25, right? He reached out to me and was like, look, bro, let's link up. Like, let's go for food. And we sat in this restaurant for how long? We got in there at like seven. We left at like 11. I hope yeah, it weren't a Chinese place. You can't use chopsticks. No, no, no. It, was a Turkish, it was a Turkish restaurant and my missus actually abused me. She's like, where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? Why are you not on your phone? Because that's what I'm so like, I can't hold conversations for long, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, want to get my phone. We sat there for like four or five hours. She's talking future, new ideas, business. Mm. Mate, I walked out of that the same way that you felt for. I'm not even working hard enough, man. Mm, 100%. Shout like, out to Yaz. because I'm, I'm not working hard enough. For those who don't know, Yaz is the um, owner of, Tro well, one of the owners of Trope who's now collaborating with the Graph Kings as well. Shout out to Yaz, good guy. We've only known each other, what, six months, if that. And uh, he, he plugged Harley for me. He said, boys, you need to get Harley on. And uh, bear in mind, like, like, I didn't know who he was and stuff. I just took his word for it. Because like you said, referrals is the best kind of form of business. Yeah, the best, man, the best. And uh, yeah, man, it was well, honestly an unbelievable pod. So I re really do appreciate you coming on. And yeah, I think so. everyone that watches our pod that subscribes <laughs> is going to be very invested into what you've got. 100%. I agree. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Wicked guys, appreciate you for having me. No man. worries Thanks at all, coming, man. Brother. Listen, guys, if you've made it this far, we appreciate you. Please hit that subscribe button. We're building it up now. It's growing quick. We need you guys to keep subscribing because we've got a lot of viewers and the subscribers don't align. So we need you guys to subscribe. But guys, if you're new around here, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment in the comment section. And we'll see you in the next. <laughs> Peace. Love. Peace.